it's time to finish this. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Now hold on just a dilly-dally second. You already made a video on new Super Mario Bros. U. What's your point, Bethaniel Mandy? The deluxe port changes almost nothing about the game. That's true, but I didn't talk about new Super Luigi U at all. Wait, really? Yes, and I can talk about any of the changes that are in the deluxe port. Oh, well, okay. Bye-bye. Go back to your little rock that you live in because you still haven't found a job. Bye. I'll have you know I live under a boulder, not a rock. Aren't you just so excited that our first 2D Mario game for the Switch is a port of new Super Mario Bros. and Luigi U? Eh? I love how Luigi U has the same world map. Isn't it also great that there's no new power-ups? Everyone, let's pay respects to our lost comrade, Blue Toad. We're gonna miss you, buddy. Instead of some cool new characters like Wario or Waluigi, we get Toda and Peachette. Nintendo is actively striving for unoriginality. Also, Peachette created Bowsette, which was mostly a horrible abomination. They took out Boost Rush mode, which is dumb because it could have been used in handheld mode. You can play as any character in Mario Bros. U, but you can't play as Mario in Luigi U, because that makes all the sense. The spin jump is now the same button as the regular jump. It's not horrible, but an option to just map our controls is desperately needed. Playing as Toda and Nabbit adds 100 seconds to all the levels. This defeats the whole purpose and challenge for Luigi U. There's an option to change Luigi's physics to Mario's. Why make Luigi exclusive DLC if you can play exactly like Mario does? You know Nintendo hates Luigi when they just add a green X over bros instead of removing the word so the logo actually looks good. This level's called Rolling Yoshi Hills, but come on, you can't classify these as actual hills. Most people like the hidden Luigis in every level, but I think it's creepy. I wouldn't want my face plastered all around without my knowledge. Look at this, there's fish bones in the ground that are completely fossilized. That means Bowser has found a way to revive these fish and bring them to life after millions of years. And that's honestly fascinating, but guess what Luigi's doing? He's destroying them. Luigi hates science confirmed. Only in a Mario game would a walrus pull a snowball out of his <laughs> Why is this the only original boss? New Super Mario Bros on the DS had plenty of new and creative bosses, but this game has one, one. Some of the mushroom houses are so lame. Like what's this, a one up and a star? Oh wow, thanks guys, that's gonna help me. Luigi also doesn't care that he's falling to his death. If this game added online co-op, it would have actually been worth the $60 price tag. Also, this game is $60, and they get away with it too because it's Mario. I didn't realize I was playing Mega Man. They didn't even bother to change the final boss to Dry Bowser. Where's my variety? What the hell is this fire bar sprint level? Look at how ridiculous this is. There is now a dot after the word Nintendo. This is not a correct sentence. I swear, Nintendo, if the next 2D Mario game has the word new in it, I'm gonna have an aneurysm. Warning, the following video is over-exaggerated. Some opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. This is better than the first Olympic Games, but with a withered excitement of Mario and Sonic being in the same game. Are we really gonna have these games every time there's a new Olympics? The opening cutscene is again, the best part of the game. Tails is flying off the ski jump for a better score. Cheater. Oh cool, I got mail. Oh no. Oh Machow's in the game, oh no. Shadow has the most uncomfortable smile I've ever seen. I don't know if putting in Silver the Hedgehog was the best idea, seeing how well Sonic 06 turned out. So Mario and Sonic has rivals you'll sometimes fight, which of course are all bad guys. That's weird, because you can play as Bowser or Dr. Eggman, so are they just not bad in this game? How is Bowser Jr. not flown out of the skis? He's basically on flip-flops! The Dream Alpine is awesome, but that frame rate is not. It can really chug. Robots should not be allowed to compete in the Olympics. If you like making ugly snowboards, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games is for you. Why is the boutique only for your me? I'd much rather customize one of the Mario or Sonic characters. Imagine pulling a book out of a library and opening the pages to find it blurred out unless you pay to read a portion of it. That's literally what this game does. It's not real money, but like, like what? Bowser figure skating. This is wrong, man. 
Where did we go wrong? With all these skiing games, it would have been nice if there was more than two types of hills to go down. You lose! Thanks for sounding excited, uh. asshole. How is this a secret shop? It's in plain daylight! Er, nightlight. Most characters still don't wear appropriate outfits for the events, but some like Peach and Daisy do. I know this is dream ice hockey, but all this fire and heat would have melted the ice rink. Dream curling? That's a funny way to spell dream bowling. All these party games barely change the way the games work. It's just different point systems in the same games. Waluigi can swim through the air! He's worthy of being playable in Smash Bros for this reason alone. I am shocked at how well skiing works with the balance board, but forget trying the half pipe. You just wiggle your legs around and can do all the fancy tricks. I'll say it, I had some fun with this game, but only with the dream events. If the whole game just had that, I would be much happier with the series overall. No way. That's an official Nathaniel Bandy 64 shirt that you can get at crowdmade.com slash Nathaniel Bandy. Yeah, I think so. Okay, now that's epic. I guess I'll have to pick this up. Literally. What is this? This was all you, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I, I gave know. you allowance so you could pay for gas to go job hunting, not to give me this. Mm. Most games have three save files. This one has two. That's not three. Bowser and Dr. Eggman are finally teaming up in a video game. I'm sure glad it's one where the goal is to control the Olympics and not something actually cool. Probably discount Chaos Emeralds, and they're missing the silver one. Why does the DS version of this game have an actual adventure mode and the Wii version doesn't? Why am I forced to watch the computer do the jump? Just tell me their score and let me play. Apparently, only Amy's hammer can be used for this Switch, because no other hammers have ever been made. I don't think this snow machine game is actually in the Olympics. Okay, that is legit a dab. The supersonic downhill makes you disqualify if you hit a box, but you have almost no time to react to it even with the warning. Toad says this about a thousand times. Someone spare me. Oh, they added Big the Cat, everyone's favorite Sonic character. The luge adds blur when you reach top speed, which makes the whole minigame a blurry experience. Ice hockey could have actually been fun if the whole thing wasn't touch controls. It's incredibly unintuitive. Yeah, that's not a good idea, pal. It's a bomb! I love when quizzes are in video games. It makes me feel like I'm in school again. Wario farts on a chain chop so he'll fall off the stage. And it works! <laughs> Alright, Nathaniel. Waffles are ready. Ooh, you made the good stuff! Oh, I love Eggos! Hey, prayers. Oh, sorry, sorry. Warning, the following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Even if these games are starting to feel <laughs> more and more uninspired. How are you doing that? I didn't do you, this! You're trying to poison me! Yeah, I, I, I didn't do this! How can I, I even do like that? It. Guys, guys, will you chill out? I just want to spread the waffle love. This is the game where the franchise started to dip in quality, and it shows. The character models weren't updated at all. The opening cutscene is nothing more than random gameplay. The pre-rendered cutscenes are gone. The DK spaces are neat, but couldn't they have used some random Mario enemy instead? I liked playing as Dong. See? This game actually invented Battle Royale. Nice try, Fortnite. If there's one thing the tag team names got right, it's Daisy and Waluigi being titled the Awkward Date. Cause damn, they would be pretty awkward. When you pair Yoshi and Koopa Kid, they're called Dino Cousins, which makes me wonder, is Yoshi secretly a double agent if he's related to Koopa Kid who's related to Bowser? Is that why Yoshi wouldn't go in the castles in Super Mario World? Because he knew he'd be killed off for betraying Bowser. And they say Mario games don't have lore. 
The computer players move so slowly. It feels like ages before you get to play every turn. Hey look, we're playing Awful Tower again. Banking coins is basically just hammer drop and coin shower flowers to form child. It sucks that you can't pick out the capsules you want. I'd rather buy them than get something random. Do you see what I'm seeing? They're putting Goombas in cans to eat. That's just not right, man. That, that's not cool. So unrelated, can we talk about how goddamn catchy this minigame song is? It's one of Nintendo's best pieces. Gladiator and Squared Away are basically the same minigames, but with the roles reversed. If you don't get first in the main game, you're brutally sucked into a black hole. Holy shit! It's sad that penguins are better off in Mario Party, while real life penguins are risking extinction due to the poles rapidly melting. If you lose an ID UFO, you get sent into space to die. No spacesuit, no oxygen, just pure unadulterated suffering. I thought this was Mario Party, not Candyland. Heat stroke actually gives me a stroke. There's only three types of bonus stars, minigame, coin, and happening. Where's the variety? Vicious Vending is the dumbest minigame ever. You turn a lever for two seconds, get coins or a womp, and that's the whole game. You can't lose on the tightrope. Literally just tap left and right to avoid the slow moving balls and you'll win every time. Don't get stuck in this red circle of death. It's not fun. Why can't I play the card party game with Boo, Koopa Kid, or Toad? Also, this mode is incredibly slow and monotonous. You just get stars without playing minigames or collecting coins. Whoever came up with this bob on ball needs to get fired. This is unethical. As adorable as this little cutscene may be, there is no way that bouquet had this many flowers inside of it. Why is Luigi's head so off-centered compared to everyone else? Oh yeah. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Because honestly, you probably aren't playing with power. And that's just sad. Nintendo Entertainment System. Could the name be more long-winded? Why is there so much space in the cartridge? It's a waste! I know the console's old, but games get stuck inside of it so easily. Blowing in the cartridge does not fix your problem. Stop that. These square corners can really hurt your hands over long periods of time. Anyone else's thumbs feel sore after a long gaming session? The NES is home to tons of LJN games. Yeah, you know the ones. Why does this controller have a microphone for games that look like this? Was that really necessary? The controller cords on the Famicom are way too short. NES Advantage? That's a funny way of spelling NES cheaters. The bottom of the NES has an expansion pack for accessories, but none of them were released in America. Everything about the top loader is awesome, except that there's no component output. Why would they get rid of that? The NES basically created the wizard. It also created Super Mario Bros. the movie. Ugh. You know, I want to meet the person that said, yeah, you know what, let's make a glove controller. That's a great idea. Attaching the sensors suck. You have to put tape on it just so it stays upright. And when you give up on the power glove after five minutes, the buttons on the controller are not only mushy as hell, but the controller still sucks since the glove always picks up your motions. Whose idea was it to turn something as basic and simple as a D-pad into a tiny rocking platform? And you can't even push the other buttons while you're on it. So what do you do? You hold the controller in your hand, which defeats the whole purpose. Just play with a controller. The NES Max is cool, but this D-pad is garbage. This circle thingy doesn't need to exist. Look at this controller. What is this, a boomerang? Nope. And don't even get me started on the U-Force. It's basically the Kinect, but 10 times worse. The speed board does not put the speed at your fingertips. Unless you're me and actually love this thing. Owning Rob in the 80s is the equivalent to owning a body pillow in 2019. Ow! Ooh! Ah! You gotta add the NES Classic to your video. Did I say you could come in? Go back to your rock. It's a boulder. A boulder! Don't forget to do it! Whatever. This is just a Raspberry Pi in a cute overpriced package. Look at the length of this controller wire. This is unacceptable. There's only one controller in the box. The game selection overall is pretty good, but where the heck is DuckTales or the other Mega Man games or Tetris or Adventures of Lolo? Why is there Super C on here, but not Contra? That's like if they added Mario Bros 2, but not the first one. The little door doesn't open. Only a wuss would use a save state for an NES game. 
Okay, John, you can add this in the end. This was completely unscripted. So basically, I was done recording for this video, and I was trying to unplug this, okay? And when I unplugged it, basically, um, everything just got really defangled up. Like, look at this. This is completely torn off. It's stuck inside the NES Classic. Now, why is this like this? Because I was forced to buy a third-party extension cable because the freaking controller wire is too short on this. Okay, so update. I was able to get my controller working again. Thank God. Now... Basically what happened was this metal piece, okay, let me try to show it, this metal piece, it got stuck inside and I had to use freaking tweezers to pull it out. Warning, the following video isn't over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared are accurate to my thoughts and feelings. The blue blur certainly isn't a blur with this game. Sorry to tell ya, but that's how it is, man. God, the game starts with a basic launcher. That's not a good sign. Why is a Sonic game split into parts? They're pretty short already, so what was the point? Sonic moving his finger attempts to recreate the two-frame wiggle from the classic games, but now it has more frames, but not enough to make it look smooth so it comes off as awkward and clunky. What in God's name happened to the physics? There's zero momentum, Sonic doesn't roll down hills, if you let go of right he stops in place, he feels weightless, what the heck? There's only four worlds. Four freaking worlds! And they aren't even brand new themes! They're just knockoffs from Sonic 1 and 2. Why does Sonic pointing up take like three seconds? John, add a timer and time that for me. Okay, thanks. And of course, they're reusing boss fights. I'm not even surprised at this point. Even the final boss is just the Death Egg robot. Of all the things to copy, why the mediocre special stages from Sonic 1? Since when could you just retry a special stage? What kind of sense does that make? The Vine momentum is completely wrong and just, just doesn't work like Vine should. Why is this modern Sonic and not classic Sonic? I know Generations kind of established the difference a year after, but it's still really bizarre. The homing attack is kind of cool, but completely unnecessary. It exists in 3D Sonic to make it more playable. 2D Sonic doesn't need it. Why does the instrumentation of the music sound so Genesis-like when the game looks modern? How did Sonic Team mess this up so bad? Wait, 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 Dimps made it. Now it makes sense, aha! Uh -huh. You wanna know why Sonic's jump looks so garbage? Zoom in and put this in slow-mo, John. When Sonic is about to land, there's a few frames where he just turns the other direction because the original animation has him rotating too much. The levels are overly simplistic and not layered well like Sonic 2 or 3 was. What's the point of lives when you can just farm them by playing the stage? All I'm doing is running around. Oh wow, look at that, I got 30 lives. If I don't home into the cannon, why do I have to be exactly in the middle to go down the cannon? Of all the stages to knock off from the classics, they pick Labyrinth Zone. The one place that literally nobody liked. Nobody. I love how the pause menu is just recycled sounds from Sonic Heroes instead of something new. Sonic 4 is so bad that Sonic Mania's reveal trailer didn't even reference it on this elevator with the other classic Sonic titles. I didn't know I was playing Donkey Kong Country. Wow, I'm really glad I could see that coming. I can't spin dash on these gears to make them move faster. I can only slowly walk forward. Hey look, it's the classic boss refights the Padre's short game level. <laughs> This part is horrible to complete without Supersonic. You have to hit this third lantern, jump to this platform, turn around and spin jump immediately, then jump and dash before it closes back in. Jesus. So this game has zero confidence in itself from how much homework it ripped off the classics. Let's see if episode two is any better. I can tell just from the title screen that this is more of the same. There's only four worlds again. The eight worlds from both games still make this less than Sonic 2 or Sonic 3. It feels like a band-aid's been put on the physics. They're kind of better, but not really. The levels are again uninspired and just ripped right out of the classic Sonic games. Is it just me, or do these levels have a billion more springs than most Sonic games do? Wow, the special stage is the half-pipe! I'm totally shocked! Hey Tails, yeah, you, uh, you been skipping arm day? I thought you could carry Sonic for longer than three seconds. The fact that these tutorial screens are in every level just shows how out of touch the devs were. The game was meant for older fans of the classics, not three-year-olds. 
Uh, Sonic? Tails? Did you forget about destroying the death egg? Oh, wait, that was supposed to happen in episode three. Oopsies. I can't hit the red button to stop the head from shooting arrows. Could this game possibly be more generous with these bubbles? They might as well just have them all over the damn screen. This Metal Sonic fight may have been kind of hard if there weren't rings covering the whole level. The fact that the DLC in Episode 2 is just Metal Sonic playing harder versions of Episode 1 stages further proves this should have all just been one game. One warning sign is enough. Why is there 50? The sign should just say this. Hey, moron, don't fall down the pit. Gameplay. I can step on Tails' face. This is the most calming boss music ever. If you get all the Chaos Emeralds to get the good ending, you get this. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That sums up how I felt after playing this. I felt like nothing. My soul became nothing. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings, and there is final boss spoilers. Even though this green dinosaur guy is made of fluffy fluff, flutter kicks to the face would not be pleasant. Trust me, I know. Can we just talk about how hard it is to read the words crafted world? Yeah, just zoom the logo out. Now you can't read it because there's too much detail. Do we really need a mellow mode for a Yoshi game? I wish Yoshi could aim his tongue down. It seems weird that he can't. Bowser Jr.'s shell looks completely different from the rest of the game's textures, and it's bothering the heck out of me. Cool costumes, guys. You got a blue bucket, a red bucket, a silver bucket, a Mario bucket, a Luigi bucket. Well, geez, Yoshi, that was a little uncalled for. I mean, you could have asked them to move, but nope, just give them a squish. Is the music trying to lull me to sleep? Why does the game have to pause every time you hit a checkpoint? I get this is the first boss, but only three hits? Are you kidding me? No, 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 Yoshi, not the big house. I hate you. Yoshi, I wanted to let you know that I hate you. And suddenly we're playing Yoshi's Woolly World. Why don't you get that big egg when you eat the thick shy guy? These zombie shy guys really should have looked like zombies with blood running down their mouth and pieces of skull hanging out. Missed opportunity. Yoshi's not actually scared of the level. He's scared the IRS is finally gonna catch him. I get that bird is a staple to Yoshi, but some new bosses would have been kind of nice. Why is the sound effect so quiet when you run into the bricks? I mean, that's just, that's really anticlimactic. Where's the big boom? Pretty sure that's just Wilt's face squashed onto some cardboard. This is basically the Porky fight from Subspace Emissary, but slow. No, I'm not interested in collecting your dumb little souvenirs one at a time for each stage. I think Yoshi had too much to drink. Don't lick the Wiggler's booty. He doesn't like that very much. The co-op is basically new Super Mario Bros. multiplayer, but broken. Like, look at this, he can throw infinite eggs on his back. And also, the levels, like, just don't work with two people. I wish you could take off this dino head since you can't throw eggs with it on. For some levels, you can get over 10 flowers, which makes them feel less valuable. Kind of like the power moons from Mario Odyssey. If you thought the game was child-friendly. Think again. A time limit on an auto-scroller. That makes all the sense. Well, maybe if you weren't farting around, Yoshi, that wouldn't have happened. Look what you did. So for the whole game, you can get these costumes for protection, but it was so easy that I honestly forgot they existed. See, if the flutter wasn't so broken, this might have been a little bit harder. There's an amiibo box costume, but no crafted world Yoshi amiibo. I need more Yoshi amiibo. Look at them, they're so precious. Hey, so you probably don't know this, but this was the 100th Triggered episode. 100 Triggered episodes, that's crazy. I can't believe we've actually made it this far. This is, this is what, almost, this is almost three years of yeah. one series, and the fact that we've made so many. I guess we just wanted to say thanks. I don't Absolutely. Really like anything yeah. big planned, but <laughs> yeah, just wanted to say thanks, and Thank you guys, absolutely, it. yeah. Here's to 4,000 more Triggered episodes. 4,000? 4, 4, At least. <laughs> Are there 4,000 Nintendo games? We'll make it happen. <laughs> we'll make it happen. All right. Thanks, guys. Warning. 
The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Who's ready to talk about overpriced cardboard again? Any takers? Hello? All right, let's get it out of the way. Oh my God, Virtual Boy 2.0, wow. I've always wanted to look up a bird's butt. They forgot the one thing that the original Virtual Boy desperately needed, a head strap. Where is it? Do not look at the sun or strong light. Also guys, don't do drugs, don't litter, make your bed every morning, don't forget to floss and be a good law-abiding citizen, okay? Okay. This kit also comes with Rob the Robot. The VR tech is honestly really good, but my arms are already tired after a few minutes. If you ever wanted to go inside the Windows XP background, Labo VR is for you. So now that we have VR and a Labo camera, it's time, Pokemon Company. No excuses! Get on that Pokemon Snap 2 already! We have been waiting for way too long! The elephant without the ears looks like Jason's mask. Oh! Why does it have to recalibrate every five minutes? Using the elephant really hurts your wrist after a while. Flying through rings, my favorite pastime. Mmm. The blaster games are extremely fun, but man, this handle does not mesh with your hand at all. I didn't know I was playing Hungry Hungry Hippo. What's with all these random eating videos? The Virtual Boy is still giving me a headache after all these years. Uh, you don't need to eat that whole piece in one bite. Show this to someone on their birthday. Well, I, I guess if I want to scare them off, maybe. Who in their right mind would go through all of this effort just to store their foot pedal? We're just gonna throw them in the closet afterwards. You know what would really keep this Labo VR game alive? Being able to share your own mini games with the world. This has to be the biggest oversight ever. Pong in 2019. Press R to dance, huh? I'm cooking a slab of butter for dinner. Who's hungry? Okay, two big problems with this minigame. One, you don't even use motion controls to box. You just push a button. And two, my boy Matt isn't even here training us. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's is on the Switch, I guess. This makes Wii Music look like a masterpiece. You want to win in two-player rhythm? Just spam the button so your friend will never stand a chance. And that is another video done. What up, Papa Bandy in the house? Papa Bandy? What the heck? What up, Papa Bandy in the house? What are you doing, Bethaniel Mandy? I got my job back as a pizza delivery guy. Somehow I don't believe that. Almost fooled ya. Huh, I'll get you next time. Anyway, I bet you forgot to talk about your vehicle kit in your video, right? You did? Okay, here you go. Thanks? Don't mention it. But you should mention that this hat is on sale in your merch store. Links in the description. Okay. They basically made a vehicle kit already. I still have the motorcycle thing. The back of this box is way too busy. What are my eyes supposed to look at? This is the most boring and bland box art I've ever seen in my life. A foot pedal made out of cardboard. That's not gonna break. I can't see how these tiny pieces of felt are gonna keep this foot pedal from moving all over the place. Oh no, you put the Joy-Con inside the foot pedal. Now it's gonna smell like feet. Step on me if you like. The innuendos are hidden deep in Labo. I know it looks like I'm driving really bad, but this game has no steering. I'm serious, you control it with your foot and that's it. That is not a key. It doesn't even come close. Why is the Joy-Con even counted as a separate step? You just insert it into the thing and that's it. Uh, that's a steering wheel, not a car. The marker stickers are the biggest pain in the butt to take off since they're so tiny. Why do I have to fuel my car? This is a video game, not real life. I feel like the joystick is getting ruined trying to jam it into the spray can. It would have been nice to have a mini map to know what's coming up on the course. Driving with the steering wheel is surprisingly accurate and fun. However, the box itself could use a little bit more weight since it feels too light. That didn't destroy the car. 
How is everything indestructible in this city? Uh, missiles mean nothing, I guess. I don't know. The submarine has the crappiest controls ever. You move around turning the cogwheels on the sides, but it feels so clunky. The battle mode attempts to be monkey fight, but it's just not. They really dropped the ball with Mario Kart integration. You can't use any of the knobs to do stuff, so there's no jumping, aiming items, looking behind you, or tricking. How did they mess this up? Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Cause Mario be getting all them girls. I mean, seriously, everyone has a crush on them. It's kind of weird. Once upon a time, there was a lovely princess. Two minutes into the game and I see a noose. This is gonna be a wild ride, isn't it? I see Mario hasn't got rid of that sign with his name still. This is the worst handwriting of all time. How does a two-sided coin have like four pictures? What is this dark magic and how can I possess it? You know, a dedicated run button would have been really nice. Oh, so now I have to pay money to sleep? The first game I didn't have to do that. Why am I paying now? This Koopa sure has a lot of pictures of Peach. That's a little creepy. Come on, Mario, you're made of paper. Go through the crack! You don't need to be cursed to learn to do that, okay? Welcome to the 65th Super Fun Quirk Quiz. That's an oddly specific number. Is this a small reference to the original Paper Mario being on the N64? Does that mean there's 63 Paper Mario games before this? I need to know. Would you guess that you can walk on this tiny ledge? Maybe I'm dumb, but that looks like part of the background to me. I could apologize by letting you smell the bottoms of my feet. Whoa there, I am not into your foot fetishes, Hooktail. You need to chill out. So Luigi went on his own little adventure, and when he's talking about it, Mario had the audacity to fall asleep while his bro was sharing the story. What a jackass. Seriously, you're made out of paper. Just slither through the giant gaps in the bars to escape. It's common sense. Wait a second. I didn't know I was playing Pikmin. You got a super boots. That's bad grammar. Okay, this is just straight up nasty, man. I don't care if Mario's a plumber. Warping through a toilet just doesn't sit right with me. Look closely, my friends. That is a fake mirror right there. You want to know how? Because there's no reflection of Peach. You can't see her. Let me guess. A ghost comes out of this box? Wow, I did it. I've been really depressed thinking about the depletion of fossil fuels. Hold up. I'm playing a video game to escape real life, not be reminded by it. Wait a minute. Is this just Paper Metroid Prime? All these Bowser levels makes me wish an actual Bowser game would come out one day. I can't be the only one thinking this is a subtle reference to that Rainbow Ride Star of Mario 64, right? Am I the only person that thought? Okay, yep. Okay, who put the piranha fish in the fountain? That's not cool. Ah, yes. Jumping on up a bomb to wake them up is a great idea. Why does this song slap so hard? Lovely. They added emoji badges again. After the insane battle with Shadow Queen Peach, fighting off her two forms, having to take on 14 HP attacks, and all that madness, what do you get at the end? You get one star point. One star point! Please never forget about us, alright? Oh, believe me, Professor, we didn't forget. The players did not forget about this wonderfully crafted, near-flawless RPG that went far out and beyond to be one of the best sequels to any game ever created. We did not forget that. And then this happened. Yeah, we'll get to this one eventually, don't worry. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings, so don't even think about eating me so I can turn into an egg to be thrown. That's not polite. This game lies about how babies are born. There's no stork that delivers babies. See, when a mommy and daddy love each other very much. The full title of this game is Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Well, that's a mouthful. And it's misleading. The game plays nothing like Super Mario World. It's technically a prequel, but it's really a spinoff. Before I enter 1-2, there's a red Yoshi. But then I start playing and he's pink! I've been betrayed! Betrayed! I love that the game has red coins and flowers to collect, but why do I have to have full freaking health to 100% a stage? That's just dumb. How are stilts preventing me from eating this shy guy? The Molten controls are so awkward for no good reason. I love how stoned Yoshi looks when he touches 
touches a fuzzy. I know these are flies or dragonflies, but like, these look pretty suggestive. Mmm, Nintendo, you should look that over. Mm -mm. Yoshi's Island has some fantastic music, but my god, it is reused way too much. These freaking fish really irritate me. Don't look back. Whoops, I looked back, I didn't pay my taxes, Yoshi's just a rebel. Eh. Why are so many bosses basically just big round balls? You know, more than half of these levels are just grassy plains. They're really pretty to look at, but it gets repetitive. Yoshi's Island, creator of the most annoying sound in the world. You sit on this piece of wood for one minute. I'm serious. This whole segment takes just about a minute and you do nothing the whole time. I feel like the helicopter takes way too long to slow down when you're going fast with it. Poochie and lava is not a good combination. I'm really not a fan of stages that force you to play near perfectly or you have to restart. That's just unfair. That moment when baby Mario gets robbed from you. You know, I feel bad for Kamek. He's gone out of his way to serve baby Bowser only to get squished by him. Boy, I sure do love getting lost in a linear platforming game. What, you didn't know Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games was on the SNES? There really is nothing scarier than a chain chomp falling from the goddamn sky. That face when you've been digested and shat out by a frog. Also, you can literally stand in one spot and aim your eggs up. You'll never get hit or miss your shots. I love how this big spooky monster goes down with one little egg. These blue hedgehogs are literally the worst. Not only are they fast, but they're hard to take out since you can't jump on them. Bad Sonic, bad. I can't be the only one that tried to make this freaking jump for hours on end, only to find out you're supposed to enter the cave from the top and get the key that way, right? Please tell me that wasn't just me. It, it, uh, it was? Okay. I don't think anyone changed Baby Mario or Baby Luigi's diaper this whole time. Can you imagine how smelly they must be? Huh. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Because day and night cycles, it's the one backup gimmick to freshen up any video game series. Why does the sun and moon have to argue? Why can't you just be friends? Mario, how is a star gonna help their problems? The sun is a star. They just need to go to couples therapy and work this out. While Luigi's getting hooked, not cool like it too. Is it just me or do all these GameCube Mario Party games feel the same? They didn't add a Bowser board. And no, Infernal Tower doesn't count. I feel like we've played this mini game before. <coughs> Awful Tower, <coughs> Leaf Leap. The S in results looks like a flip too. Mr. Tree, don't get mad at me. I have to obey the dice roll and that's that. Why do the pokies look so freaking creepy in this game? So DK takes one bite out of this banana and then just throws it behind him. How about finish your food, okay? And don't litter. A piece of fluff can be turbulence free? Man, we should get rid of airplanes. This is the real deal. Round of miracles? Just call it chance time. It's literally the same thing. I don't like how Daisy says, Oh yeah, I won. No need to sound so sassy, miss. Man, come on. Why do I have to watch the CPUs play dual mini games? Just tell us the winner and move on. This is the sixth game now. Let's get it right. You know what this mini game kind of reminds me of? Don't worry, I won't show the ending. This so-called car commercial scarred me as a kid. I've always wanted to mow the lawn in a video game. Why is this a thing? Whoa! What did they do to Yoshi's voice? I feel like dropping all these mines in the water is bad for the environment. Dizzy rotisserie is way too easy. Once you find out which way is straight, you're basically set. There should not be a wheel to change the pricing of the stars. Do you realize how cheap that can be? This star shuffle space is literally just giving you a free star. It is way too easy to keep track of the spinning hats. They're basically just humping the tree, let's be honest. Just like in Mario Party 4's Mr. Blizzard's Brigade, one snowball somehow turns you into solid ice. The player on the stage stands no chance of surviving because the balls move so fast. Wario looks way too happy trying to hit us with these spinies. The fact that DK moves the star every turn makes it so unlikely you'll ever get a star on Clockwork Castle. And then at night, he's replaced place with Bowser. This is blasphemy. Bowser moves so slow. Pick it up, pal! Did that boulder just scream? 
Yep, it screamed. All the minigame modes are pretty boring and don't do much to add value to the minigames. This shy guy is the worst mailman ever. He's making civilians pick up his drop mail. Okay, if you actually got near a black hole, you can't just swim through it because you'd be slowly torn into atoms and sent to either another universe or literally nowhere. Why is Seer Terror a rare minigame? It's nothing special. It's just a luck-based one where you pull a rope and hope you don't lose. Ooh, look at these strange black balls. Yeah! Hey Luigi, you shouldn't stalk Mario and Peach in their free time. That's a little creepy. The solo levels are just linear boards, and it's honestly pretty lame without stars. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. There are minor spoilers, if you even count the fun cheesy story as one. Let's race down to Chinatown. It is about time Sonic Heroes 2 came out. And here's another Sonic game that didn't make beautiful cheesy cutscenes and stuck with text instead. Big the Cat. I like the selection of Sonic characters, but there's only 15 to pick from. How is it smaller than the selection from Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed or Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? I do like the inclusion of the Sonic Heroes characters, but Espio and Charmy are nowhere to be found. And where the heck is Jet the Hawk or Wave the Swallow or Storm the Albatross or Cream the Rabbit? Well, actually, Cream was replaced with 4Chow, because reasons. Why can't you mix and match the characters? It always has to be the same three, even outside the story mode. I don't know how I feel about Silver's new voice. You seem quite determined, Vector. We'll go. Also, I just realized it's been since Sonic Generations since we've seen Blaze the Cat in a Sonic game. What took so long? Big's music while using Ultimate is from his cutscenes in Sonic Adventure. I'm angry that it fits so well in a racing game. I'm so ready it's stupid! You know, if all these Sonic characters don't want to race because of their suspicions with the Don Pa, why are they racing to begin with? Ooh, I like that. Please stop trying to seduce me. It's not working. Why does there have to be a swish every time a character switches talking? It's pretty distracting. Easy there, big guy. You don't want to blow a gasket. Right now, I kind of do. This out of context. I know Big is supposed to be dumb, but he's seriously overkill in this game. He's basically Patrick from New Spongebob. When cheating fails, cheat harder. Good life advice. That's always worked well for you. So I get three stars for doing this one race, but only one star for an entire Grand Prix. That doesn't make sense. So this game is really fun, but why can't the characters run like in Sonic R? I know that game sucked, but come on, that would have been a great change of pace. The campaign gets repetitive after a while since you play the same track several times over. Why does the Switch version have to run at 30 FPS? It would have been way better to have slightly worse graphics for 60 FPS. This is a racing game we're talking about. Ice Mountain is like if Ice Ice Outpost and Toad's Factory had a baby. Ah yes, I love unlocking stuff via random drops. Now thankfully it's not microtransactions and it's easy to get credits, but it still leaves a bad taste in my mouth. None of these guys are wearing seatbelts. That's not safe. Zavik and Blaze have space for their tails when driving, but Tails himself, the smart science dude, doesn't. It's just like bunched behind the seat and that's it. Look at that! It's not Mario Kart 8's Bowser's Castle. It's one thing to include similar tracks from previous games, like Ocean View is almost identical to the one in All-Stars Racing Transform, but it's another to have only 21 tracks and 8 of them being very similar to previous tracks. Why do I have to unlock paint kits? Sega, it's paint! It's just colors! Why would you block colors from me? What kind of sense does that make? Playing Team Sonic Racing without your team is like an apple pie without apples. It's just not right. The ending of the story is really anticlimactic. You just race all the villains for like the fifth time, but Eggman is in a bigger car. Then you watch an image shake with some explosions, and that's about it. Seriously, this game would have benefited so much with actual cutscenes. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Because really, this game does a lot to stand out from every other Mario game. Hop aboard the bunny train. Why is the 2 so freaking big for the logo? A world map for a Game Boy game like this is incredible, but that water is destroying my eye sockets. I get the team means time, but does it really need to be there? It's pretty obvious already. 
Why does Fire Mario have a feather over his head? That's because he can't see the difference between regular and Fire Mario when it's in black and white. Thanks for the info, pal. Don't mention it. Wait, why are you in my closet? You know how everyone says the propeller mushroom is overpowered? Well, get this. Bunny Mario can float in the air forever if you mash fast enough. Good golly gracious. Why does the star music sound so creepy? I've always wanted to play a level inside Mario's crotch. If you game over, you see Mario's literal gravestone. Well, okay, not really, but it kind of looks like it. The crane is grabbing Mario's nose. Oh, and now it's grabbing his ear. Oh God, that's gotta hurt. You may not believe this, but I actually own this stage. See, there's my NB initials right up there. Where have I seen this attack pattern? It's strikingly familiar. Damn, Sonic has seen better days, let me tell you. Is that a cowfish with horns? God, I love this game. This is the most basic auto-scroller ever. There's literally no enemies and the jumps are so easy. For this bird boss, you can literally just stand in one spot and just float over his head for like a five second knockout. Honestly, all the bosses are way too easy. Let me get this straight. You get eaten by this Koopa and go inside to find a whale, which means this turtle ate a whale. The fire! Why can you only spin jump when you're big, Mario? Mario shouldn't be throwing fireballs in space as it's much more dangerous. Fire in space can start at lower degrees and can last for much longer. Like, look, this is just science that I googled in two minutes. You should have done the same thing, Mario. The first space level, I could only jump higher than normal, but the second one, I can basically fly around. I guess the law of physics don't exist in Spaceland. Those scary spikes might be threatening if I wasn't able to just hold right and run and never get hit. When Mario dies, why does he throw up the peace sign? Something about that is kind of demented. Apparently, these fire things are called F-Boys. Why not just call them fireballs like every other Mario game? Well, not much else to say about Mario Land 2. But we aren't done there, because we haven't talked about the Mario Kirby educational video which references Super Mario Land 2. What the heck are you talking about? Aha! I finally don't have to be reminded to add things in the videos! Oh, don't forget about Luigi U, or the NES Classic, or Mario Sonic 1 or Olympic Games DS! Yes, that's right, I got this under wraps now. Okay. O okay. Alright. So this is all in Japanese and I have no idea what's going on. So I'm gonna try to piece together this story. Peach has some letters she gives to Mario and the letter is about Wario. So then Mario takes a cart and crashes into the nearest farm so he can eat a carrot and become a bunny. Then he finds some guy flying a plane that's wearing a mask for some reason, but lo and behold, it's actually Wario. Yeah, Mario couldn't see through his mask, which is pretty pathetic if you ask me, but Mario jumps up and literally punches the freaking plane out of the air and it crashes. Then Mario goes back to Peach and she's reading some books out of a suitcase like nothing happened. The end. This is some deep lore. Warning! The following video is kind of over-exaggerated. A handful of opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings, because Super Mario Maker 0.5, aren't you excited to dive into this one? I get Super Mario Maker on the Wii U is successful, but why does a gimped port need to exist? Look how long it takes to test the stage you're building. Good lord! Why don't we have all the pieces from the beginning? We shouldn't have to unlock them. I'd rather unlock amiibo costumes. Wait a minute, you can't use amiibo. Why? There's no reason they couldn't port the costumes over. Every 3DS is compatible. Like, what? Why? Why? Oh, and if you want to share your custom levels, well, have fun not doing that. Even though the 3DS has internet, you can only share your levels locally. And that's it. The first level for the Super Mario Challenge is 1-1. This is a game about being creative, and we start with this. The bottom screen is useless. Couldn't it at least show the medals we can achieve or something? Is it just me, or does the new Super Mario Bros. U style manage to look worse than new Super Mario Bros. 2? For the levels where you have to defeat a certain amount of enemies, I wish you would keep track on the bottom screen instead of having to pause to check. Great, now I'm playing 1-2. Yeah, you know what? I already own Super Mario Bros. Can I please just play Mario Maker? Oh, lovely. Now I'm playing 1-3 from Mario Bros. 1. And on top of that, there's sample levels ported right from the first Super Mario Maker. So adding all of those, plus the recreations of older levels, equates to roughly 31 out of 100 that aren't brand new. I can't use buttons for the menu, and I'm forced to touch the screen. Why can't I do both? Where the heck is my Nat Attack minigame? 
you can't record custom sound effects anymore, which is dumb because the 3DS has a microphone. There's no 3D, which could have been a neat, distinct future, but by this point, Nintendo stopped caring about the 3D entirely. The game still has those ugly shadows behind everything. We can see what's going on, okay? We don't need them. All of a sudden, new Super Mario Bros. 2. Also, wow, that's some epic slowdown in an official 2D Mario game. Who would have thunk? So the Mario Challenge mode has all these different objectives, like defeating certain enemies or grabbing so many lives, but why can't you apply these objectives to your own custom levels? Creating your own levels is easy enough, but the screen crunch definitely makes it a bit more clunky than on the Wii U. You can't even search for specific Wii U levels. All you got are these random ones from the 100 Mario Challenge or these recommended courses. That's right, that means no bookmark features either. This really hinders the whole share aspect, doesn't it? You can no longer like courses you play or even leave comments. There is no way to play the course world without being online, which kind of makes sense, but this is a portable console. That means you can't play most of the game without Wi-Fi. Why are we forced to complete the first medal in these levels to see what the second one is? Just show them both to me. I just noticed that the bottom screen says, press start to pause. As if every game in the past 30 years hasn't done that. Thanks for the reminder. Why is there lag on the menu? This game really needed more optimization. After playing through 88 levels and finishing the main story mode, your reward is one Edamame. That was totally worth it. Uh, Mario, what's with the sensual positioning with the pipe? Oh look, this is Heart Attack the Stage! Super fun! The final level in Super Mario Challenge isn't even that hard. It's just wall jumping and bouncing off enemies. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. I felt that I was a Mario. It was spooky. I hope to read more by Bowser. Perhaps next time, something longer. Did you like my auto-generated haiku? You did? Good. So what's different about this Mario Party compared to the other six? Well, I'll tell ya, absolutely nothing. Mario is out taking his morning constitutional? Who talks like that? Just say he's walking. I have a hard time believing a ship was able to fit Peach's entire castle on board. Why did they get rid of the day and night cycles? That was a cool idea and they could have expanded on it. Why can't you play as Koopa Kid anymore? Maybe Birdo sucked the skin off him with her giant snout and all that's left is dry bones, the bones and soul of Koopa Kid. You know you're out of ideas when you turn hitting the dice block to move into a minigame. When you pause the game, Bowser blows mist out of his nose every two seconds and it gets really annoying. Hey, there's the star. Well, so much for that. I feel like we shouldn't be popping balloons. What if the rubber gets caught in our blades and the helicopter explodes? <laughs> Bowser, I did not agree to get my picture taken and pay up the 20 freaking coins for your lousy photo. What is the point of mic mini games if you can set them to just playing them on the controller? That defeats the whole purpose. There's an eight player mode? Well, I'm too lazy to call up seven friends. I'll just clone myself seven times instead. Those aren't spiders game. Those are scuttle bugs. Call them by their name. If you guys just stayed on the hot air balloon, you wouldn't have to worry about getting zapped to smithereens. I don't know what I did, but these cheap cheeps have a serious grudge against me. I like how the blooper just casually steals a star. No big deal. Good job, Koopa Kid. You made Toadette swap the same amount of coins with Toad. Ooh, you're so evil. Wait a second, when did I start playing Kirby Air Ride? I'm pretty sure hives aren't built like this, but okay. Why does Grandpa Koopa raise the price of this star every time someone gets one? That's not fair. This pose of yours makes Makes me a little uncomfortable. So I went to this orb shop and saw a GameCube, but it's not for sale. What a tease. Most of the music is sadly pretty weak in Mario Party 7. There is so much lag when you're shooting these darts. It takes like two seconds after you say fire. Mario Party Cross Minecraft, only the best collab. What on earth does shooting targets have to do with acting? Legatu picked up this chest by just putting his rod through the top. That makes all the sense. 8,000 Mario Parties later and we're still playing Shy Guy Says. This mini game is literally just picking up DK's garbage. I am never taking vacation advice from Toadsworth ever again. He gave us tickets to Bowser's Inferno for crying out loud. The DK spaces are getting old. Can we just play as DK again? I miss the monkey. The big dong. The happening space on Bowser's board moves the star every time. It's stupid luck if you get one. What's in there anyway? Huh, hey John, why don't you zoom into that jar so we can see? 
Oh, hey, what's up, buddy? Oh, yeah. What kind of windmill grinds corn? Oil Crisis is a really fun mic game, but I wish everybody could go at the same time instead of painfully waiting one by one. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. The following exaggerated opinions are in the video and are shared unaccurately. I was going somewhere with this. You know what? Never mind. I can't touch the letters on the touch screen. Zero out of 10, where's my refund? Literally unplayable. Where the heck are the awesome amiibo costumes? I guess I can't use all these amiibo for anything but Smash Bros now. Ah, so the replacement for that is dressing up my me. I could care less about wearing a denim skirt. Good thing I can wear this epic burner skirt, which is literally the dumbest thing I've ever seen. You can dislike a course? How dare you give me any chance of feeling bad about myself? Why does the new Super Mario Bros. Angry Son look so... not angry? Like seriously, he just looks bored. It kind of stinks that all the characters in Mario 3D World play the same without unique distinctions. I get why they did that, but it's still kind of lame. The Goombrats look so derpy in Super Mario World. I'm so sad that the Mario Maker 2 stylus and drawing pad isn't coming to America, but basically everywhere else. Why is it called Super Mario Maker 2 when it's technically the third one? The Big Mushroom is back, but it got rid of the cool CRT filter. Have fun creating levels with a controller. Trust me when I say that you'll actually miss your Wii U gamepad. You know how stacking Goombas is a thing in Mario Maker and in Mario 3D World? Well, guess what? You can't stack the Goombas in the 3D World style. And you can say goodbye to overlap pipes too, even though they've existed for forever now. So you can use auto scroll for vertical levels, but not custom scroll. That makes no sense. It's kind of strange that you can't adjust the beat block music with the song or its own beat. Thwomps can go in every direction except up. Why not? We couldn't have done it without you, Chief. Ho, Nintendo. Are you slipping in the Chief meme? Uh-huh, yeah. No, no, no. Okay, sorry. Mario, you had five seconds to push the dog off the button, and yet you did nothing. You know, all these anonymous people giving us jobs didn't need these blank Facebook profiles. Why not just use random me's? Man, I can't wait till the Kaiser levels come out while I'm also upside down. That's gonna be fun. I don't think you should use a Lekitu Cloud to work, Green Toad. Those things tend to disappear after like 10 seconds. There's story mode levels where you bring a toad back to the goal, but you can't make your own levels with this condition. The fact that I can't jump in this level is giving me the worst anxiety ever. Is it just me or does the role seem useless? You can't jump out of it and just kind of get stuck until the animation is over. You can't even roll down a slope. Those are some nice 8-bit statues. We're not getting amiibo of these, are we? Mario, you're not even holding the block. You have psychic powers and just don't want to tell us. Uh, buddy? You, uh, you gonna be okay? <laughs> I didn't need to see that. Stop telling me I need help after losing like two times, Luigi. I can do it myself. What a lovely castle. Peach, it's literally the same castle as before besides the green and blue sides, but okay. So the credits show 8-bit sprite art, but there's still no unlockable costumes. I'm gonna hope for them to return in an update and then be disappointed later. Why can't you draw anywhere near the starting line? I have great internet, but every online multiplayer match I played was really laggy and not fun. You still can't just look up a name of a level. You have to know the ID for something specific. There's still so many power-ups missing. Like where's the ice flower, or penguin suit, or acorn suit? I could go on for a while. So you can crouch in Mario Bros. 1, but you still can't slide down slopes? The UI for creating levels is way too large. There shouldn't just be three size settings. It should be way more adjustable. Nintendo said they're adding online play with friends, but this should have been a no-brainer from the beginning. The endless mode is cool, but it'd still be nice to have the 100 Mario mode too, so we can actually achieve a satisfying ending. I'm glad vertical levels exist now, but why can it only be used after going through a pipe? There is still a giant shadow over all the objects, and it's still unnecessary. If you fail a clear condition, the level just keeps going. Why not just automatically restart after failing? 
So after I spent several hours designing a course for a video, you know what I thought would be pretty fantastic? Saving it for later. Well, guess what? My data got corrupted when I tried to save my stage. But what if I upload the stage? Oh, look at that. Same exact problem. Now, maybe there's too many items on this course, but even if that's the case, why allow the limit to be so high? Classic Nintendo. Warning. The following video is kind of over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared are somewhat accurate to my thoughts and feelings, because Dr. Candy Crush is the game I've always wanted to play. The rules are so weird in Dr. Mario World. It takes less capsules to destroy viruses, and you can move other halves of capsules through bricks. There's a limited number of capsules? Since when do doctors have shortages on pills? Dr. Mario World's gameplay feels like an easy version of Virus Buster. That's fantastic. The pills don't even fall automatically. You can plan out your move for eight years if you want. The ready go voice is really annoying. Ready? Who wants to spend $69.99 on 1,050 diamonds? Eh? Any takers? You know what's fun? Only being allowed to lose five times every 30 minutes. And you gain one heart every 30 minutes too. But hey, you can play more by paying for it. Yeah! Now you don't have to pay for hearts. You could just ask for them by spamming your friends on Facebook. You know, there really should at least be an option to watch an ad to increase my hearts. You have to unlock every character and assistant through a loot box. And it 4,000 coins, which takes a long time to get to. And on top of that, the loot box system allows for duplicates, which makes it even harder to unlock everything. Let's add up the least amount of coins or money you'd need to unlock everybody. There's 10 doctors and 32 assistants, which means you need a bare minimum without duplicates, 168,000 coins or 1,680 diamonds to unlock everything. That equates to over $100 minimum with diamonds. And there's more characters coming later on. While you can replay stages, you don't earn additional coins for beating them. Honestly, this is just Nintendo's Candy Crush. They could have packaged together a normal Dr. Mario game, but instead we get this nonsense, and quite frankly, I'm sick of it. I'm literally sick. <coughs> I gotta see a doctor. <coughs> Yo, what up? Dr. Nandy in the house. So what's wrong with you today? Nathaniel, I can see right through you. Ha ha ha, let me see if you've been here. Okay, yes. Uh, yeah, so it looks like this is actually your first visit to the Zuck Medical Center. You must be imagining things, and I don't know. So uh, what's going on with you, buddy? Are you even qualified to be a doctor? <coughs> Have you uh, not seen my PhDs? Yeah, so uh, what was wrong? I just have a fever and a really bad cough, and it won't seem to go away. I see, I see, okay. Let me go ahead and take a look at my supplies. So with a sore throat, it looks like you're gonna be needing some hauls, and uh, I think okay. you a little bit better on top of that. I've got uh, Dr. Mario on the NES and on the Game Boy. Um, uh, okay. <coughs> You know, since when does Mario qualify as a doctor anyway? He looks terrified on the menu. He knows he's a big phony. When you get down to the end, instead of the doc giving you the right amount of pills to finish up, you're just given random garbage that goes into your body for no reason. That can't be healthy. Pausing the game blacks out the screen entirely, which sucks for a game like this. Imagine playing on a high level and having to pause for 20 minutes to eat some Wendy's, only to come back and screw yourself because you couldn't see what was coming up. Why is it that pills only disappear when the same colors touch three or four times? Does this body just not have white blood cells or what? I'm sorry, but this guy is just done. There is no way he's getting healed with this many viruses. There's no quit to the menu button. You can only pause the game or lose. Also, why only one life? Are you kidding me? I get this is a game, but viruses cannot grow enough to have actual faces or arms or even freaking teeth. Why does the virus look like a Goomba? I know this is Game Boy, but it can be really hard to tell what shade of white and black is what on the screen. How is the Game Boy's pause screen more interesting than the NES one? There is zero wiggle room to rotate your pill once it hits a virus. You have to lay it down perfectly. I love Dr. Mario's face when you lose. He's just like, sucks to suck. <coughs> hey, Nathaniel. Hate to see you back here so soon. The hulls didn't work, I guess. Oh no, don't you worry, I've got just the thing for you. Let me see, Orbit, gum, probably not gonna work. 
Uh, gamer pills? I don't know if he's a gamer. <laughs> uh, ooh, I got it. Okay, why don't you go ahead and try out uh, Tetris and Dr. Mario on the Super Nintendo? Thanks. Why does the title screen sound scary? Like, seriously? The problem with this combo pack is I always end up playing Tetris because that's a perfect video game. Why didn't they add any new music? It's still just Fever and Chill. Maybe it's just me, but the remix of Fever sounds kind of mediocre and not exciting. I love how Mario taps his toe when you pause. He's just like, hurry up, slowpoke. Dr. Mario's clipboard is made out of gold. They could have put that money into medical research. The doc's mouth is literally gray. I think he needs a doctor. This is the saddest virus I've ever seen. I almost feel bad. Whatever company let a freaking virus be a doctor needs to be sued to oblivion. Bro, you got a runny nose? Help me, please! <coughs> of course, of course, I've got the solution just for you. Let's see, um, little, run a little low on options. Okay, how about uh, Dr. Mario 64 and uh, Dr. Mario and Puzzle League on the Game Boy Advance? I am tired of playing Dr. Mario games. Is this the only way? No, these are a part of your cure and you're gonna play them whether you like it or not. Is this Paper Mario 2 or Dr. Mario 64? Uh-uh-uh, I do not trust Wario to be a doctor under any circumstances. I'll be rich if I can get my hands on those. Holy crap, Nintendo literally makes Wario a real-life pharmaceutical company. I'm not sure if that's brilliant or depressing. The entire story is just chasing the scientists down and constantly getting stopped by randos you have to fight off. There's not much to it. You can now play as Dr. Mario, Metal Dr. Mario, Wario, and even Vampire Wario, but not Luigi. Luigi. Instead, we have Applebuy, my, uh, my, my favorite character. <laughs> Let's listen to this compressed menu music. Ugh, God! Now, why isn't this cute twirl around and punch a move in Smash Bros? Even the sound effects are ear grating. Hey, now don't worry, man. I got two more tricks up my sleeve, and that is Dr. Mario Online on the Wii and Dr. Luigi on the Wii U. And I'd get you Dr. Mario Express and the DSi, but I don't have a DSi, and the DSi shop doesn't work, and it's digital only. There's a lot of problems with that, you know what I mean? Okay, saying? fine! <laughs> this better work. Oh, it will. I'm a doctor. Where's all the modes from Dr. Mario 64? No more story mode, or marathon, or score attack? All that's new is online, which doesn't even work anymore. Okay, and there's Virus Buster, but that's just Dr. Mario with motion controls. No thanks. Why is Virus Buster missing the cough and sneeze music when those are in classic mode? This startup music is also terrifying for no reason. That yellow boy partied way too hard last night. This menu is practically ripped right out of Dr. Mario Online. Like seriously, look at this comparison. Let me get this straight. Luigi doesn't even take the pills out of the package before putting them in the bodies. <coughs> Year of Luigi's canceled. Luigi does the same dance move as Mario. Learn something new, pal. Oh, do you want to get your stuff back? Okay, I have an idea. It's called Turn Around. They brought back Virus Buster, but now it's touchscreen. That's barely better than before. Hey, buddy. I, uh, I picked your lock because you've been missing your appointments. Is everything okay? Oh, no. Well, back to the boulders, I guess. Oh no, this man is dead. Uh, uh, no worries, I'll use my Luigi powers to save him. What the heck? My friend, I have come to heal you from that horrible doctor, Dr. Nandy. His PhDs were bought online as you could guess. Please, enjoy my game. Goodbye. You know what? I like those Yoshis just sitting on the shelf. That's adorable. And look at how customizable this game is. You've got classic Dr. Mario, Dr. Luigi, and Virus Buster all organized on a neat menu, and you can turn off or on Miracle Cure as well as Endless and Versus mode. Dude, Dr. Mario rivals addictive gameplay in a way no other puzzle game ever has. Matching up pills to clear up viruses, it's so much fun. 
playing against the CPU is actually awesome, because they're smart and can be challenging unlike most games with computer players. And look at the clever old 3DS. The CPU is on the bottom screen instead of the side to avoid clutter. So freaking smart. Oh, and this jam after winning? It makes my ears pre, dude. Dr. Luigi is surprisingly fun as well. I don't know how only L-shaped pieces work, but it just does. And Miracle Cure is pretty neat too. You basically get power-ups like clearing an entire line or a giant bomb as you play, and it's nothing too disruptive to the core game, which is perfect. The online is also seamless. I never have issues hooking up with someone and getting destroyed. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Because really, who doesn't love to wiggle-waggle the we most a whoopity whoop. Don't lie, you about that life. Wow, the first Mario Party on a new console and they skimped out the intro. Is Ballyhoo's hat Cappy's little brother or something? Why on earth is Mario Party 8 running in 4x3 when 16x9 was more than possible on the Wii? There's no online. Man, have I just been craving to play as a blooper. Oh, my whole life I've always wanted to play as a freaking blooper. Let's be honest, the only good board is Koopa's Tycoon Town. Wow, DK just throws people to the star. That's really fair. For all the weird crap Waluigi does, this takes the cake. The dude straight up pulls out a rose when he wins, for literally no reason. Why are the character profiles cramped into the top right corner? It just makes the whole screen look cluttered. I don't think the blooper can play punch a bunch. He doesn't have hands or arms. I gotta say, I never thought I would trade candy with a shy guy, get a spear shoved up my booty, and then get paid for it at the end. Why do I feel like I've played this game before? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a second. Hold on! And don't even get me started on baseball. This is like the millionth time they've made a batting minigame. Ah, uh, yes, shake the soda. That's not suggestive at all. All Bowser does on this board is move stars or give you coins. Why isn't he being evil? Why does this Leaf game have to be so slow and boring? For the love of God, Birdo, stop shaking your hips like you're such hot stuff. Please! Drybone straight up died after losing the game. His yellow eyes just pooped out of existence. Goomba's booty boardwalk? Okay, he does not have a booty. I'm just saying, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm keeping it real. I'm not the only one that thinks some of the boards look way too bright, right? Since when could you ever shoot booze with anything? Goomba is the worst pirate ever. He straight up hands over stars for free. Good luck popping all those teeny tiny balloons. 10 coins for a star? You know, what's with the newer games always changing the price? 20 is the perfect cost for how many coins you get each turn. When did I start watching Terminator 2? How does Boo even trip on rope? He's floating in the air! Bowser has financial clout, in case you forgot. So Bowser Candy takes two stars from every player you pass. That is straight up evil and I love that. This minigame is the equivalent to button mashing in the old days. All you do is shake your remote as fast as you can. Why can't the ship save both of us? That's kind of messed up for it to pick up one person and strand the other. I guess we're playing Sonic Advance bonus stages now. This is just unintuitive Wii Sports bowling. They'll never give up on Shy Guy Says, will they? So we did get F-Zero on the Wii. Kind of. A 30-person racing minigame is insanely cool, but the models look pretty stiff, I gotta be honest. Warning! The following video is kind of over-exaggerated. Some opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings, because don't you just love it when a game completely removes core features from the gameplay? I would register my software, but I feel like this pin isn't gonna work anymore. I can't believe Mario let Luigi get away with the mushroom. You coulda ran for it, dude. You know, I always figured the day would come where Peach and Bowser actually get married. Why is Count Black and Luigi talking in third person? Mario's name on his own house is never coming off, is it? You look really silly, says the guy with rotating square hands. Wait a second, where's the RPG battle? Is this even an RPG? Why does it take 8,000 years to transform into Mega Mario? The pixel partners are pretty lame compared to the partners from the first two Paper Mario titles. Why does Mario need throw to pick up enemies? He has hands! Damn does Mario climb up the ladder slowly. 
It sucks that I can only use the Wii Remote. It'd be nice to have the Classic or Pro Controllers as an option. Begging someone to go out with them doesn't work. I, I know this on a personal level. Constantly falling down these pits are annoying. One million rubies? Am I playing a Zelda game from a parallel universe where rupees are called rubies? So now I have to pay off this one million debt by working for this Egyptian guy and basically have to hit this spark block one million times. That's right, this is underpaid labor in a Mario game. Rated E for everyone. So I need to make 10,000 rubies running on this gerbil wheel, and I'm not even exaggerating. You hold right for over five minutes to get enough rubies. What were they thinking? Why is this passcode so long? I literally had to write it down so I wouldn't forget. That's my Merly? More like, it's not Melee, huh? Got him. This isn't a game show. It's more like a really fancy interrogation. I love that this room has tons of Nintendo systems like the N64, GameCube, Famicom, SNES, and Virtual Boy. Ugh. Would you look at that? This room has every partner from Thousand Year Door. I miss you guys. I love going on message boards and complaining about games I've never played. This statement hasn't aged in the slightest. Why the f*** did my game turn into a dating simulator? So how much do you make? Oh my god, Peach is a gold digger. Guys, you need to stay far away. Why does the minus button have to take you to the controls? They should have mapped that to switching partners in pixels instead of having to push one and two simultaneously. The pixelated clouds do not mesh with the Rocky Mountains at all. What's your favorite word? Oh, you don't have to ask me twice. It takes until chapter five to get Paper Mario's iconic weapon, the hammer. Why bother making a minecart section if you can't even jump? Now, yes, changing to 3D does change your path for that one railroad, but that's it. And suddenly we're playing the Minish Cap. I'm tired of refighting O-Chunks. He's not getting any harder. You can't buy multiples of an item. It's only one at a time. Bowser is so OP in this game. His fire is incredibly strong and it has insane reach too. After Black interrupts the gauntlet of fights, you have to walk through five areas with no fighting. Why not just take me to the star block instead of wasting my time? So there is one RPG battle and they decided to make it retro and hey, would you look at that? I somehow missed jumping on enemies. Nice. Okay, okay, hold on. Space doesn't work like that. If you were literally launched into space, one, you'd probably die from your body not being able to handle the sheer speed, and two, there's no gravity to pull you back down. World 7 is the biggest slog. There is just so much backtracking and it's really freaking boring. Maybe I'm just bad, but the fast flower goes way too fast and makes everything slippery. You know, what does this game even want to be? A platformer? A fighter? A space shooter? A dating sim? An RPG? They should have just picked one genre and focused on that, but instead we have tons and they're all mediocre. Warning! The following video is not over-exaggerated. All opinions shared are indeed accurate, and look, all I want is Bethaniel to get off my back. But instead, he just finds ways to get into my life all the time, and I'm sick of it. He thinks the Nintendo Switch's online is actually okay. I guess he likes mediocrity. Why on earth did you bring the skin of your body pillow to my house? And of course, you were one of those eight people that unironically was into Bowsette. I'm not even surprised. I don't even know why Bethaniel always breaks into my house. He could at least ask to come in. He got fired from Papa John's. The dude can't even hold a job. I'm actually related to him by blood. That's a problem. How on earth do you confuse rocks with boulders? Bethaniel obviously lives next to some rocks. Read a book, pal. So I gave Bethaniel money to look for a job one time, and what does he do with it? He buys Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games on the DS, just to troll me. I can't confirm this, but I'm pretty sure Bethaniel put something in his talking waffle purely to scare me. Ow! Ooh! Really, dude? You couldn't have just, I don't know, walked over and handed me the NES Classic? I really didn't want that Labo vehicle kit. What in the world would make you actually think that? When I wasn't home one time, Bethaniel hacked into my computer and started randomly streaming on my channel. You guys might remember that. It was horrible. He's actually done this twice now. Twice! I went to the doctor's office the other day only to find Bethaniel was my doctor. I thought he finally put his life together, but instead he hands me cough drops and Dr. Mario games when I was sick. And worse, I literally died because he didn't know how to cure me. And I'm only alive because Luigi saved me. I hope I never see him again. Who's the little devil? We need to talk. About what? I think it's time that you finally leave me alone. Look, I know I invited you to stay here that one time, but then you wasted my money and now you live by a pile of rocks in my backyard. But we're brothers. 
Well, this is tough love, bro. Well, you know what? I'll throw this fancy looking ball at you if you're gonna be like that. Where did you get that? It was near my pile of boulders. Why? Do you have any idea what that is? I don't know, it's a fancy looking ball with some initials on it. You know, I probably could actually sell this for a few No, don't do that! Uh, I mean, that is my rock and I lost it. You know, I don't really believe that you care about this. It was in your backyard. That, that's not true. It, it has my name on it. Where? Yeah, those red initials, that's actually my name in Arbenizianizian. Yeah, that's not a real language. Look, we just give it back. Finders keepers, losers get zucked. <sighs> All right, fine, I'll make a deal with you. If you can reach 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, you give back that orb of power, I, I mean rock back. Really? Yeah, in fact, I'll even give you my second channel and give you a head start. Well, what are you waiting for? Prove me wrong. I, I uh, trust me, you're gonna need the help since you don't know how to do anything. <laughs> okay, you wanna know what? Bring it on! Wait a second. You're gonna do this. What? For the first time in my life, I saw flames in you. Where, what? Where is it? Get it, get That's it off, get it. That's a metaphor. Look, uh, Oh, when I told you that you couldn't do it, I saw a glare in you that I'd never seen before. And it wasn't an angry glare or anything. It was a motivational glare. You wanted to prove me wrong. And you know what? I think you can do this. Heck, I'll even let you stay here if you'd like. I'm gonna work with my boulders. Why? Because that is my home. And you're right. I gotta work my way out of this situation. Since Nathaniel doesn't really do ROM hack stuff anymore, I'll be taking that over with things like Mario Sunshine DS and Super Tetris 64 to start. I'll be innovating with the types of videos I make just for the near future, so make sure to subscribe and let's do this gamers. Warning! The following video is over exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Because let's be real, this is basically Sonic Adventure 3 whether you want to admit it or not. Oma Chow is on the freaking menu? Please have some mercy. It's a menu with text. I can figure that out. Imagine a Sonic game without a spin dash. Yep, you're looking at it right now. Shit. Yep, Knuckles just said sh It's amazing how god awful the controls are in the bonus stages and that you must grab a hidden key to get into them and not get hit throughout the whole stage. Discount gun truck segment. I get Tails and Knuckles want to help against Dr. Eggman, but what about your plane? You just let it crash and burn. Sonic, this time there's no way out of marrying me. Amy, you gotta chill. Physical assault is not gonna work. Fighting the other characters feels just as awkward as it did in Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Casino Park, you just bounce around in non-existent physics and hope for the best. And you can't forget about those pinball segments with death zones, because that's not a problem with finicky controls. Egg Albatross is just obnoxious. For the first phase, Sonic randomly homes in on whatever he feels like, so you're out of control when attacking. And then in the second phase, you just spam really fast on the cockpit and win. And if you die at any point during this fight, you go all the way back to the beginning. Oh goody! Enemies with giant life bars in a game where speed is the main element! That's not gonna ruin the pacing. Could this alligator chase be any more drawn out? It takes 25 seconds to get through this. And don't even get me started on hitting these targets that don't auto-aim in a 3D platformer. I love how Sonic just doesn't have a mouth in this cutscene. So Shadow has amnesia and can't remember anything, but nobody explains to them how he died in Sonic Adventure 2 and... Wait, wait, he, wait, he died in Sonic Adventure 2. How is he alive? I love how just turning the camera gives the game a seizure. I'm sorry, but no Sonic stage should last longer than 10 minutes. What is the point of fighting when you both straight up said you're going after Eggman? What kind of breeze could straight up lift Cream out of the air? My goodness. I don't believe for a second that Cream can lift Big the Cat on top of Amy. 
I'm sorry, but there's no way this tiny umbrella can make someone like Big float slowly. No. I just realized that Big grinds on rails between his legs. Oh ho. Now hand over that chow nice and easy. Well, where did this come from? Why does Espio want the chow out of nowhere? Well, that won't get annoying. Aren't you excited to have to kill all 85 enemies in this level? Oh yeah, I'm exploding with excitement. Mm. You know what's fun? Looking for objects or enemies without a radar in these giant levels. Oh great, I have to collect these chips while in uncontrollable pinball mode. There's gotta be a more effective way to blow out torches than to make a tornado. Why don't you just blow it out like wouldn't be hard. In order to unlock the final portion of Sonic Heroes, you have to beat the whole game four times. Talk about padding a game out. Let's see if I can do 50 jumping jacks before Metal Sonic's transformation ends. Wow, I did it. What the, where's the music? Yeah, we're Sonic Heroes! No, seriously, where is it? This does not feel right. Warning, the following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Because who doesn't love watching Ouija get scared of cartoon ghosts? It's pretty Lamau. Nintendo? Why was that scary? You know what's scary? Being reminded there's a Pikmin trailer in this game and there hasn't been a new Pikmin in years. Luigi's Mansion only existed as a fleshed out tech demo. That's very disrespectful to Luigi. His first starring role was Mario is missing and now this. Wait, does the key change in size? It looks so big when Luigi grabs it, but then when it's in the keyhole, it's way smaller. You know, why couldn't EGAD have just made a ton of these poltergusts and then sent out an army of, I don't know, Delfino officers? Because they seem kind of tough instead of scaring poor Luigi half to death. Oh yeah, this ghost is about to spit out a hot DJ beat. Here we, here we, here we go. I should get a Game Boy Horror. My Game Boy Color can't make images look this smooth and saucy. Luigi has the goofiest run cycle, and his nose bobbles when he's running. That's gotta hurt. You only do two things in Luigi's Mansion. One, check for interactive objects, and two, suck up the ghost. By searching your Game Boy Horror at a mirror, you go back to the foyer. Okay? Luigi saying that he's always wanted a fan is actually much deeper than you'd think. Back in the day, the spotlight was always on Mario, and Luigi was just a generic player too, so this signifies his need for support and love for others. I'm sorry, but it really does look like Luigi humps the chest to open them. Of course, the baby of all the portrait ghosts is the creepiest one with the floating teddy bears and getting mysteriously shrunk down in size. Someone needs to replace that shower head. It barely spews water anymore. Why does Luigi care this much about dust on some random painting? I like how EGAD does jumping jacks when talking to Luigi. Once local Waltz champions, they can't compete since their feet don't touch the floor. Well, no duh, that would be cheating. The boos are a pain in the butt to collect because you can't really trap them in your vacuum, and half the time they disappear into different rooms. There's something disturbing about a toad furiously crying on the floor of a degrading bathroom. I have to ask, how do they fit all this treasure through this teeny tiny hole? I know the ghosts are the bad guys, but when you capture these things, they get squished, then electrified, and forced into a painting they can't escape. That is kind of gruesome, you gotta admit. I noticed this cereal is called what I think says boof, so I looked up the word. And, uh, okay, I did not expect that. Wait, but then this box says food. Wait, wait, which is the real box? Is anything even real? So we see that Mario is trapped in this painting, but later on, we find this glove in this chest. You know, he's already wearing the gloves. I don't get this. What is going on? Oh, Luigi, you perv. Don't you dare. Yep, you get what you deserved, pal. Why does EGAD have only one tooth? Well, probably because he eats pickled dandelions with barnacles and a diesel marinade. Ugh. Luigi's shadow is hanging. This is dark even for Mario standards. Soup he died in her sleep at seven years old. Do you know how guilty I felt sucking this ghost up? This ghost looks a lot like an Octoomba. The average playtime is like three to five hours, and this was a launch game for the GameCube. Why is it so short? Warning. 
The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So will you lighten up already? Please, it's gonna be okay. Since this is handheld only, I think the battery life would be better than three to seven hours. And what's funnier is the regular Switch got an upgraded battery life of 4.5 to nine hours. So why would anybody buy this? The Joy-Cons don't detach anymore. And it doesn't work with a dock, which literally defeats the Switch's entire selling point. You know how the regular Switch has a lousy kickstand? Well, the Switch Lite did the next best thing, gave up and removed it. So have fun using a Pro Controller and awkwardly setting your Switch Lite on a table. No dock means no way to use an ethernet connection for the internet. Is that even gonna make a difference though, because Switch Online? Like seriously, P2P servers in 2019? Also, there's still no party chat or message system that existed on the Xbox 360 a decade ago? The specs haven't been upgraded at all. It performs pretty much the same. And the Joy-Cons no longer have HD rumble or the IR camera. That's not the worst thing ever, but it's still kind of lame. That means you'll need additional Joy-Con controllers to play games like 1-2 Switch. 1-2 Switch. The Switch Lite doesn't work with Labo at all. And it won't work with the Ring Con or Ring Fit Adventure. You can connect Joy-Cons, but if you don't already on a switch then you can't charge them without a charging dock or a charging grip so if you need extra joy cons to begin with why not just get a regular switch the overall volume seems to be slightly lower there's no auto brightness feature that's a weird thing to remove since this is a dedicated handheld it should come with a stylus just like the ds and 3ds did the screen is still in 720p an upgrade to 1080p would have been nice when it comes to the internal storage size, it's still 32 gigabytes. Even worse, if you have a lot of digital games downloaded and want to re-download them, that means you have to get another micro SD card. Look, I know it's my fault for going all digital here, but still. The speakers are on the bottom, which might be a problem if you have huge hands since you'll buffer out the noise. If you're playing at night while charging your Switch, you can't really rest it on your stomach since the charger port is on the bottom, so you'd have to hold it up or just lay on your belly. So what happens if these Joy-Cons get the infamous Joy-Con drift? Mm-mm-mm, that's no good. <sighs> you know, maybe this just isn't for me. I mean, the Switch Lite is just meant for handheld gaming, and I pretty much always play it with the dock. Hey? Hey, I just wanted to congratulate you on hitting 50,000 subs, so here you go. Keep up the good work, dude. You got this. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Well, I've got a Switch Lite now. I, how about we talk about why the Switch Lite is mind-blowing? In three, two, one. The price point is at 200 bucks. That's pretty fantastic for a console with so many high quality games on it. Got her the left Joy-Con buttons and now we have a D-pad. It's hard to tell if it's gonna last or not, but this is way better than just buttons. For those that don't have a Switch, this is probably a good alternative if you don't see yourself playing it on the TV. The new design is really sleek. This is one of the prettiest Nintendo consoles I've seen in quite a while. And its smaller size makes it a lot easier to carry around too. Let's be real, the Switch Lite is basically Nintendo saying goodbye to the 3DS. Oh, you were a good little handheld. We'll never forget you. You know, the name of the Switch Lite actually makes sense too. It's not something dumb like new Nintendo Switch or Switch U. It's just a lighter version of the Switch. The shoulder buttons feel much nicer too. They've got a really solid click compared to the flimsy feel of the normal Joy-Cons. Warning, the following video is kind of over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared are a little accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Vroom vroom, time to gamble for rubies and get nothing out of it. E. I feel like connecting a Nintendo account to play should be optional. This alone is going to turn off newcomers. So I select my first character by randomly pulling down on a pipe. What have I gotten myself into? Mario Kart Tour can only be played vertically with no way to switch to a horizontal mode. You know, the touch controls are fine, and I don't even mind the auto acceleration, but it would be nice to pair a Switch Pro Controller and play like that as an alternative. So there's gonna be tours with new tracks that last every two weeks. Why do I have to wait this long to play new tracks? Gotta love how you just auto trick off every ramp. I still can't believe I'm playing a Mario Kart game where you aren't guaranteed to play as Mario from the beginning. What the hell?
Does there really need to be a mission where the only goal is to get a rocket start? Just put that in a tutorial. Oh my goodness, the gold pass. This gets you some rare cards and rare characters, some gold challenges, and the ability to play in 200cc. However, here's the thing. They're putting 200cc in a paywall, and it's a subscription service that costs more than Nintendo Switch Online. This is EA levels of dirty. And don't forget that you can pay for rubies to put in the loot box pipe and maybe get a character or cart you want. Isn't gaming so fun now? I love gambling. Super Mario Kart came out in 1992 with a two-player mode, but this brand new Mario Kart game doesn't have multiplayer at launch. Like, I'm not even mad. I'm just stunned. This new bubble item does what exactly? I mean, it's basically a bullet bill, but bad. You can't see everyone's times after a race. Instead of getting hurt by touching the dinosaur, you can trick off his face! That's just hilarious. Anyone else think the bat cam is way too zoomed in? It's so easy to accidentally use an item when you just want to hold on to it. An option to have a dedicated item button would have been nice. It doesn't feel right being able to trick off the geyser when it used to destroy you in the older games. Why are so many tracks duplicated in multiple cups? I know these duplicates have minor differences, but this still makes the cups have less value and it makes them harder to remember. You can't even pause in the middle of a race. Your only option is to change settings or quit. I have to wait to play all the cups. Look, I know drip feeding content works for some mobile games, but why'd you do this to Mario Kart? So there's two different loot box pipes, and the one on the right lets you get 10 rewards for a slightly cheaper price, but it took me a few hours just to get 45 rubies. There's not even basic time trials to practice the tracks. It's pretty darn deceiving that they make single player look like multiplayer with all these random usernames. New York Minute is a pretty awesome track, but it seems strange that they didn't just make New Donk City. After trying 200cc, it actually feels like the game is moving at a really fun and decent pace. But again, it's behind a paywall. God damn it, Mario looks so freaking majestic when he dabs with that suit on. Like seriously, I hate how much I love this. You can literally pull an item out of nowhere with a ticket, because cheating is allowed now. Since when did I start playing new Super Mario Bros. 2 Kart? There's not a single bike to be found or unlocked. You can only level up your characters and carts so much per day. Why the hell can't I grind out leveling if I want to? I get this is a phone game, but that alone is a huge turnoff from playing at all. And you can't even play as Wario, Waluigi, or Rosalina. Now obviously they'll come eventually, but wow. This exists, a blue shell frenzy. Definitely not OP or broken, nah. And how is a blooper frenzy supposed to be useful at all? It's just bloopers. Warning, the following video is mostly over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. That's all I got, fam. Why is the box in this putrid yellow color? This is extremely unappealing to look at. Yet again, the opening is the best part of the game. The keyboard sounds are very intense. There's not a single new character. They're all from previous Olympic games. Man, does Yoshi look unenthused in his animation. Once again, my boy is swimming through the air like a goddamn boss. In the relay race, you move by swinging the remote and you throw the baton by swinging down. Why couldn't this have been mapped to a button? Shadow and Metal Sonic have basically the same special dash. Every track event forces me to use only the Wii remote. I'm gonna end up with two different sized arms after this. Dr. Eggman twirling like a giddy princess. Toad looks f***ing dead inside. Why does the game feel the need to slow down before throwing? This was way better in the first Olympic game. Bowser swinging around a ribbon is something I didn't need to see. Also, this is basically just figure skating from the Winter Games, but reskin. Where the heck is the bar meter to tell me if I'm swimming too slow or too fast? Floating above the water should be banned. Like, come on, ref, wake up, look at this! You know, why couldn't these songs be like, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, Mario or Sonic related? I really didn't feel like I was synchronized swimming, so I tried playing it in a bath, and that didn't help either. The birdie is not this floaty in real badminton. There's something hilarious about watching Mario smash the birdie into Eggman's face so hard that he falls flat on his back. Damn, Shadow's special smash is horrible. It's not any harder to rally the ball back. Shadow with a gun? Great. Not again. 
The trampoline isn't nearly as fun as the first game. The button inputs almost feel laggy. When did I start playing Mario Party? Like seriously, this is just bombs away on a moving raft. I don't get why these Mario and Sonic games can't just be dream events, because some of these are insanely cool and fun. All of a sudden, Mario Kart Wii Horse Riding Simulator. Discount Gun Truck Segment. Okay, now we're just playing Monkey Ball Mash with Sonic Heroes. I'm only triggered because the controls were slippery. Guys, I found Mario Galaxy 3. Ah, the clown suit. This is the one everyone's obsessed about, right? I like how the buildings are breathing. London Party is kind of like a poor man's version of Mario Party, but it also isn't. I don't even know what this is. I need a break. Nathaniel. Gamers, welcome to my bowl. Oh, hey. Have you not learned? Why did you put this in my cereal box? What? Admit it. Uh, I always admit when I'm pranking you. That wasn't me. <sighs> I don't have to. Free 3DS game in box. Story of my life. It looks like Omachow has an itch on his head, but his stubby arms aren't long enough to reach it. Use buttons to play. Finally, someone said it. I love that there's a story mode again, but it's the same plot. Bowser and Dr. Eggman team up and yada yada yada. That awkward moment when the handheld version of Mario and Sonic looks better than the console version. Why on earth does the camera fade out in the middle of the 100 meter? It almost feels like I'm not even playing. Judo is way too basic. You push one combo of buttons one time, and that's the whole game. Wow, you don't even get to move in badminton. The story mode is very lackluster compared to winter games on the DS. You play a slow, drawn-out cutscene, then an Olympic game, and rinse and repeat. What a nightmare. There's multiple pink gold peaches! <sighs> I now understand why Froggy runs away from Big. Look where he just put Froggy. Yeah. Why can't I play as everybody in any of the events? Instead, it's just a group of four characters. I can't believe they turned grabbing a water bottle into a minigame. Also, what on earth is in that rainbow bottle? I wouldn't drink that. How is shouting going to improve my throw? I feel like I'm just blowing on Waluigi's face, and now I feel bad. So we're grabbing water bottles again, but now it's in the water. Talk about making water polo as shallow as possible. It feels like I'm barely in control. Oh sweet, Mario Tennis, but you don't get to move. Like seriously, every minigame has been dumbed down. You literally tilt your 3DS to move forward and back, and you can't even guard. How do you mess up something as simple as fencing? I thought Sonic was fast. What is this? Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. 7.8 out of 10, too much water. There, I got it out of our systems. You can thank me later. What is this? Metal Gear Solid on the NES? So it was a moving truck. Who just throws their kids in the back of a truck when it's driving? That's bad parenting. It's kind of strange that we can't use a digital clock to set the time accurately. How does a professor that studies Pokemon for a living freak out about a level 2 Puccina? The first Mart doesn't have any Pokeballs. Come on, I want some freaking balls. Hmm, this map of Hoenn sure reminds me of something. I didn't know picking a couple berries meant ripping the whole plant out of the ground. My official Pokemon profile is, congrats babe, boy came. Rich boy Winston looks eerily similar to Logan Paul. Oh, the irony. Discount Viridian Forest. You know what this kind of sounds like? Students who don't study get a little taste of Quick Claw. Okay, FBI, open up, get them. Let's check out some of these new Pokemon designs. We got Beautyfly, which is basically just a recolor of Butterfree. Then CDOT, yep, that's just a nut with a face, which looks kind of creepy. And then there's Wingle. Yeah, literally just a seagull, okay? And then Wailord is just a freaking whale. It doesn't even look like a Pokemon. And finally, we got Plusle and Minin, which are just Pikachu's little cousins. Ooh, so original. Rest in peace, day and night cycles. We'll miss you. Rydal just gave me a bike because my shoes look dirty. For free! You know, real life doesn't work like that. It's a bit of a stretch to call stepping on this one switch of puzzle. 
This Pokemon contest is a neat idea, but my god, it goes on for way too long. Hey, a Pokeball in the ashes! Psych! W wait, what? I've been bamboozled! You can get free glass flutes by taking a ton of steps in this area, but the only useful ones are taking 1,000 steps which can take forever. You're better off just picking berries. I'm not sure if this guy is running in place or the game glitched out. It's pretty dumb that you can only switch your bikes by going to the bike shop and not through some menu. A good rod is really good. Wow, I never would have guessed. There is no way I'm coming out of this grass without ticks all over my body. I guess tree cosplaying is a thing. We're three generations in and your bag can still get full. And the shop still doesn't tell you the name of the TM before buying it. I'm almost done with this game and Team Magma is still using Puccina. I don't know, maybe you should try using a different Pokemon? Doesn't seem to be working out for you guys, just saying. Where the heck is the cool spin animation when you go across these arrows? Pokemon Red and Blue had to spin, but this game doesn't. There are eight HMs in this game. When is enough gonna be enough? Where did you come from? Yes! Yeah, I came from yes, don't judge me. So to get to the Titans, I have to find this one tiny hole in Route 134 to dive, then learn Braille, which that alone is insane that I even have to do, then you have to walk up here and dig in this spot to make a hole appear. After that, you must put Relicanth in your first slot and Wailord in your last slot. Oh, and real quick, Relicanth is only found underwater in seaweed and has a 5% chance of showing up. Then Wailord has a 1% chance of showing up on one route. That is if you don't evolve Wilmer. So after doing all of this crap, you can finally find the three ruins to get the Regimon. Imagine figuring all of this out without a guide. Jeez. Warning. The following video is not really over-exaggerated. Some opinions shared are accurate to my feelings and thoughts. I might sound like I'm being cold, but I'm just trying to sled through this one. Double puns, I win. <laughs> Sochi 2014, Sochi 2014, in case you missed it the first time. Here we go again. The cutscenes are the best. Wait, where is the cool opening? That was literally like five seconds. There are way less dream events in this compared to the first Winter Olympic Games. Once again, the cast has no new characters. The tutorials are way overdrawn. Like, come on, just put some text on a screen instead of these pointless cutscenes that go on for way too long and have loading times. Why isn't this in 60 frames? It's just one dude skiing. It can't be that graphically intense. Also, this course is eerily similar to the one from the first Winter Games. Before starting any minigame, you always have have to calibrate your pointer. The game should be able to do that automatically. For half of these events, you're using the remote and nunchuck. Why not have the mostly use the gamepad? You know, the one unique attribute of the Wii U, huh? I love the idea of switching from the gamepad to the Wii Mote and nunchuck for the biathlon, but you're really gonna tell me to use a wrist strap? <laughs> okay, pal, sure. So with the gamepad, the unique controls for snowboarding is tilting side to side. But with Wii Remote, it's also tilting side side to side. Your speed skating movements don't match with your character, which is really disorienting. Bowser and Daisy, huh? See, this is why nobody likes you. You ditched Mario for a big Koopa. DK really doesn't have much of a butt. It's pretty flat. Uh, what's with the face cam? And why does it keep zooming in and out? Also, what's with the face cam? Drawing a strategy on the gamepad is cool for the curling, but you can just pick the optimal plan which defeats the entire purpose. And we're forced to watch the computers play. Now you can fast forward thankfully, but just show us their score and move on. For a Mario and Sonic game, this sure looks very, uh, not colorful. It seems like there's too many white colors or something. Holy Ice Age, Batman! I feel like I'm gonna run into Sid any second now. I wish this dream stage was an actual stage in Mario 3D Land. Also, Bowser is chasing Bowser. All I could think of is a certain Mario Party game. I like that rings were included, but they add literally nothing to the gameplay. You can't see how many you have. They don't really add to your speed. None of that. What is the point of these interviews? Ooh, wow, a close-up of Mario Smug. Very epic. I absolutely love this Mario Sunshine reference, but they put Delfino Plaza into an ice hockey rink? Okay, I mean, it's not like Sonic Adventure's ice cap level exists, you know? So I was just randomly playing this, and the menu music stopped working. The sound effects are actually quite nice on their own. 
Santa needs to upgrade his reindeer to freaking bullet bills, cause god damn! So there's an online mode. One, why bother? And two, you can only play four of the 20 plus Olympic games. The story for Legend Showdown is fighting your shadows. Yeah, that's definitely not similar to fighting the fog shadows in the 2012 Olympic games on the 3DS. I don't get why Mario and Sonic Sochi 2014 has to exist. Four games into this series and very little has changed. This is the most forgettable title. Warning, the following video is not over exaggerated. Most opinions shared are totally accurate to my thoughts and feelings, because honestly, this is like turning Monopoly into Candyland. It just doesn't make sense. I guess the animated intro cutscenes are just gone now. Which stages do you like? Toad Road is my favorite. Oh, well look at Mr. Bias here. How does this giant vortex only suck up the mini stars and not the whole planet? But then we zoom in to see Bowser and Bowser Jr. with some sort of vacuum gun, and I have no idea how that's creating a huge vortex. What's even going on? What? Dry Bones is teaming up with Bowser after being playable in Mario Party 8? What a backstabbing, flip flopping jerk! Okay, hold on a second. Bowser just wanted the mini stars to decorate his castle. Bro, have you ever heard of Etsy or Amazon? Just order stars from there! Look at that, boom! My place looks nice now. That wasn't hard. Why can't I use the joystick? It should at least be an option. Players travel together. Wait, what does that mean? What the f is this? Why does everyone win mini stars after a mini game? This is some participation award BS. What happened to all the boards? They're all linear, so there's no element of strategy now. Okay, like the board does occasionally split paths, but we're all in a car anyway. And worse, there's not even coins to collect. You can only get mini stars and that's it. Also, why the heck don't you play a mini game after everyone's turn? There's a reason every other Mario Party has you doing a mini game each turn to prevent too much boredom after rolling dice. Look at how ridiculous this is. Half of these spaces do nothing at all. Mario Party 9's music is bland. None of it's really memorable or really catchy at all. The normal dice blocks don't even go to 10 anymore. Now it's just six for some reason. And the only items you can get now are dice blocks. So exciting. If only making pizza was this fun. Trust me, I know as someone that worked at Papa's for two years. Those flower wheels can't be good to drive with. Ah, great, counting enemies. We've never seen that before. So guess what a reverse mini game is. Bowser says you have to be the first person to lose, then he gives you 10 mini stars. Winner. Okay. It's way too easy to pick the right path to the cannon. The camera should scroll a little bit faster. They do have stars in this game, but they're just used as a prop for the person that wins the whole thing. Why does this mini star graph look like something I'd find in the stock section of a newspaper? The King Babom car honestly creeps me out. Something about it is unsettling. This is a great mini game, but why on earth do we need 30 seconds per section? I like how playing cards hurt dry bones. You know you guys could just like push the Babom off and be fine, right? You, no, you don't, you don't want to? Okay, it's fine. Bowser Jr. is straight up asking if I'm sure I want to play this mini game. Why is he being so polite? While it looks like we're in different vehicles and can move freely, it's just a tease because we all move the same spaces after a dice roll. It's about time Hotel Mario got a remaster. Luigi is dropping the L for getting last place. Whatever makes you happy, I guess. Uh. Press two or up, down, left, or right. Wow, that is some bad grammar. So we all lost this mini game, yet still somehow got mini stars, and it wasn't an even amount for everybody, because logic. Well, this mini game is unfair. Poor Wario has to avoid these giant boulders that quickly move down the mountain, and they aren't easy to avoid. I love that <laughs> mini game! Dude, oh. kid you not yeah. next time. Sorry, I'll go back. I loathe the reverse spaces, because it makes the game drag on longer than it already does. Why do I have to watch the computers finish the captain event after I'm done? The camera really doesn't need to zoom in and out every time a character rolls a dice. It could have saved time by panning from character to character. Bowser Jr.'s boss minigame is hitting a dice and hoping you get a star to attack him. Could it possibly be any lamer? You know, upward mobility kind of reminds me of Awful Tower. No, wait, was it, uh, Leaf Leap? No, wait a second, it was what goes up? Wait, what? If there's only gonna be one Donkey Kong minigame, why bother anymore? Just make him a character again. The minigames in perspective mode really could have just been swappable before playing it normally. Warning! 
The following video is somewhat over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared are a little accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Great real music aside, it's been a struggle marathoning the same minigame collection over and over. Bowser looks really pixelated for some reason. Well, at least the intro cutscene's back, and that's the highlight of the game once again. I don't know why, but I'm kind of mesmerized by Peach's animation being done at two different angles. Golden. Okay, cool. Holy sh- Daisy is looking right into my soul. Mario Strikers charged, but it's a massive downgrade. Uh, where's the dream events? Did they just forget they existed? Dual football compared to the normal just changes the point system. And now you can throw electric balls at players. And that's it. Now that I think about it, these dual events are kind of like dream events, but they're very underwhelming. Throughout all these Olympic games, the crowd has never been changed or altered. It's always the same characters. The strict stamina meter kind of ruins BMX. It'd be a lot better without it. It is nice that the basic events are finally mapped to buttons, but I just don't care anymore. I've played the same events dozens of times now. This matchup just isn't fair, let's be honest. Table tennis without the special shots is pretty lame. I know this is a Mario and Sonic game, but holding rings and coins is way too trippy to comprehend. So my reward to talking to random me's is flags? Why is that even a reward? That's like unlocking the ability to name your rival in Pokemon two hours after playing. It doesn't make sense. This guy definitely went to the Area 51 raid. I am so tired of this series. Now, look, the original game and even the winter games is fine. And heck, I'd even say 2012 was a pretty decent game. But nothing has changed. The formula has stayed virtually the same. This game is the same as this one, this one, and this one. In 2014, we don't talk about that one. But you know what? I've had enough. All right, 3DS version, where are you gonna spawn this time? Randomly out of thin air, maybe under an amiibo, in my cereal box? Who knows? Let's look around. Are you in the milk? Uh, no. Oh God, that's expired. Ugh. Uh, are you in the dryer? No? It is under the hat. Or what the hell is this? Uh, is it in here? No? Uh, where are you? I know you're around somewhere. I knew it. How is there more events in the 3DS version than the Wii U? Like the previous 3DS game, I can only play certain characters with certain events. I love how you can just knock the ball into the water, and then it turns into a freaking propeller box and saves itself. The future is now. They're really calling the gyrometer the move system. That makes less sense. So the amiibo can change Mario into gold Mario, and Sonic into Super Sonic for 24 hours. Wow, so epic. Making me swing my 3DS around like a maniac has to be the most unintuitive way to play Hammer Throw. They recycled games from the 2012 3DS Olympics and put them in the story mode. Oh yes, finally I can look like a fairy princess. The Road to Rio campaign is fine, but it doesn't come close to the greatness of 2010 Winter Olympic Games on the DS. Something about Color Birdos just doesn't sit right. how they just turned swimming into a competitive wave pool. Dream Equestrian is barely different from normal Equestrian. It adds a couple enemies to jump over and nothing else. No more Mario and Sonic games. I can't believe it. <sighs> okay. I think I'm gonna celebrate. Let's get, you know what? Let's get a new Switch game. Let's see what we got. We got a uh, Untitled Goose game. Seems pretty fun. Uh, Breath of the Wild 2 is coming soon. Oh, uh, Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo 2020... Oh. Oh. Ooh, yeah, tanning inside now, that's gamer. Oh, look, I wanted to ask you, do you think that anime is going to be real one day? Like, I, I need to get your thoughts on this, because I was talking to someone on 4chan, and they were... Hello? Warning! 
The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. There are some spoilers, you've been warned. So will you go Luigi time or Guigi time? Or maybe both, you tell me. <laughs> Why is it called Luigi's Mansion if it's technically a hotel? Am I playing a game or watching a movie? Because hot mama, these cutscenes are way nicer than they deserve to be. I'm not sure Toad should be behind the wheel considering he can barely see over it, and he's a crappy driver on top of that as he almost knocks the bus off. I know this is a nice hotel and all, but why would you go to the hotel when you have the Mushroom Kingdom? Yeah, they were invited, but isn't that just a little suspicious? Why on earth does Peach need eight different bags of luggage? That's a little overkill if you ask me. Uh, well, are you gonna take the cake or not? You don't need your mama for permission, just, just take it. <coughs> Lady, I can't, I breathe. <coughs> that is a big toilet for how small Luigi is. Well, what can you say, Luigi? Karma's a bit- Wow! What great timing that Luigi just happened to find a Polterguster inside a freaking car. Ah, I love when that happens. Only in Luigi's Mansion could you flash a light at a rat so it'll turn into a coin. This game is awesome. Being able to smack Ghost around is fun, but it's also super overpowered and dumbs down the combat for most of the game. And you can hit other ghosts with this, which stuns them and makes this even more broken. I will forever see envelopes with circles on the back as Smash invitations. King Boo for Smash when? I gotta say, I got no idea how Egad's glasses aren't getting sucked in. Not only is Egad handing me a freaking virtual boy, he also says, just wait until I finish the marketing materials on this. It'll fly off the shelves. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, mm. Hey look, I found the missing trophies from Smash Bros Ultimate. I can't get over that Luigi is forced to whip out the Virtual Boy to talk to Egad. That honestly cracks me up. You know, this Guigi guy looks awfully familiar. Hmm. Having to chase down these rats for a button is a pain in the butt. And they said money doesn't grow on trees. Ha! Look who's laughing now. Who added Mario 64 to my Luigi's Mansion? And who made it 10 times scarier? <gasps> so what's with the low health beat being so loud? Like seriously, they turned down the music and everything. Apparently, entire coliseums can fit in hotels now. Holy crap, a Mario Strikers reference. Now I missed that series. Is this ghost hitting on Luigi? You can buy and hold quite a few gold bones, which is basically an extra life per bone. So essentially, you can stock up if you wanted and never get a game over. Fighting on floating rubber ducks isn't as fun as it sounds. Toad abuse. Okay, so maybe a very small coliseum could fit in a hotel, but a no. f***ing ocean. No. no! What the heck happened to that nice and smooth frame rate? There really is nothing scarier than a fitness center. Trying to get this ghost to hit the other ghost with the weight is so goddamn annoying. Oh. Ow, 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 ow. This is way funnier than it deserves to be. The ghosts are dabbing. If this scene isn't replicated in real life at the upcoming Nintendo theme park, so help me because this scene is epic. I love when we're heading to King Boo, Mario is like a little kid that's trying to drag his dad to buy a video game with his saved up allowance, and Luigi's just the old grumpy guy that's like, yeah, yeah, hold your horses, we're going, we're going, jeez. So my playtime for Luigi's Mansion 3 was around 8 hours, which wouldn't be that bad if this didn't cost 60 bucks. Warning! 
The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. There is story-ending spoilers, you've been warned. So who's ready to do the cha-cha? Previously on Mario and Sonic Triggered, Nathaniel finally finished all the Mario and Sonic games, and then he discovered a new one came out, and then he passed out. Here's what happened next. Oh, hey, wakey wakey! It's only been out for a couple weeks now. What happened? Not much of anything, but uh, I did go ahead and get you Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. Ugh, Nathaniel, come on, you really shouldn't have. You really shouldn't have. Oh. There was a good reason we never saw Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games in 2018. Why is it back now? Say it with me, the intro cutscene is the best part of the game. Yay, there you go, good job. Give yourself some claps. So back in the 2008 Olympic Games video, I said this. Also, everyone swims with their clothes on, shoes and all. I mean, not that I want to see Dr. Eggman shirtless, it's just... That would be banned, right? And now Eggman can be shirtless! Oh god. This little device is definitely the NX. My dad works at Nintendo and he said so. Chapter 1 of Story Mode was literally just text, with no gameplay. I absolutely love that we get to see Mario and Sonic in their classic forms, but isn't it a little weird to see 8-bit Mario sprites and 16-bit Sonic sprites? Why not just use the 16-bit Mario sprites for more consistency? Mario and Luigi's mustaches are shaped differently. What does Luigi's look like? Uh, I don't know. It's just hair. A pair of swooshes! Ah, yeah, of course. That was totally... yeah. Also, nice reused Mario 3D World Render. The Olympic Games are held every four years? Well, not really. There's the Winter Olympic Games as well, so you're kind of lying, Toad. This just makes me want a dedicated Mario skateboarding game. Eggman, you're too thick to hide behind a tree. You're lucky Sonic is dumb and somehow didn't see you. This is a neat little story minigame where you climb up Tokyo Tower, but we're also Tails. Just fly up! Like, what are you doing? Fly! The music in this game is overall pretty weak compared to previous entries that have some serious bops. What color are Wendy's high-heeled shoes? Ah, uh, what was it again? It was uh, purple, white, no, no, wait, oh, it's pink! It was pink, of course! Horse. I love that the super hard face has the meme glowing eyes. That's so edgy. This roster hasn't been updated in almost a decade. Surely they could have added, I don't know, Pauline, Birdo, Mighty, maybe Ray? I gotta admit, the story mode is way more of just reading text than actually playing the games. And sometimes I kind of like that. All I could think of right now is Sonic R, but in 8-bit. You can't manually clap anymore to hype up the crowd. Who put Where's Waldo on my Mario and Sonic game? I love the irony of a bad guy putting in DLC to unfairly enhance characters in a game. There's something beautiful about that. We get this 8-bit shooting gallery, but no reference to the duck hunt dog at all? This stealth mission is really fun, but look at the absurd amount of time we're given. You couldn't lose if you tried. Of course they used the Sonic 1 boss. Why am I not surprised? I'm shocked we're not in Green Hill Zone 2. Winning this shootout is nothing but pure luck. You have to predict where the ball is going to be and where you have to aim based off no standards at all. The idea of the battery going dead in this game system, which would make Mario, Sonic, Bowser, and Eggman cease to exist is actually pretty dark. I'm stunned there's a plot this deep in a sports game at all. Don't feel like playing an event in story mode? You don't have to! You can literally lose on purpose three times, then skip the event and just move on like nothing happened. Luigi's gonna have the worst rashes after this. Ah, oh, his poor stomach. Ludwig, how can you be confident in beating Waluigi in fencing? Look at his arms! They're as long as you are! Oh god, this game turned into Avengers Endgame. Just look at this! Everyone is fading away! The final showdown is a 5 second 100 meter race? Talk about anticlimactic. Wario is not a human, he doesn't have nipples. The lack of dream events is made up for in these 8-bit events. But I have to wonder, why are we so limited with the characters? It would have been insanely cool to see the modern characters in 8 or 16-bit sprites. I adore that we're in the world of Mario Odyssey, but you can't get to this kingdom with 21 power moons. Just saying. Uh, dude? Look, I, I, I'm sorry that I got the game for you. Clearly, you didn't want it. I, I, I didn't realize that. You know what? That's okay. I know how to wrap this up. And that is, of course, to make a tier list as being one of the five people that's actually played all these games. I figured, what the heck, why not? So, uh, 
Oh, uh, Ah, yes, the original, the classic. Honestly, gotta put this bad boy in A tier. Mm -hmm. Of course, the DS one. Really, it's not that bad, but it's a little lacking in content. Ah, and the first Winter Olympic Games, well, <laughs> pretty much the same thing as the OG one, but just the Winter Olympics. Oh, now this is God tier. Oh, yeah. Easy, easy S tier for the story alone. Ah, yes, London 2012. That's another very easy S tier game right there. You should get a case for this one. I know I need a case, but uh, yeah, for the 2012 3DS game, honestly, it's only slightly above average. It could have been a little bit better. Oh, dear God. Trash. <laughs> Rio 2016, that's a step above trash. Ah, yes, the 3DS version. Definitely the most average Mario and Sonic game of all time. Well, I got it for you digitally, so uh, I hope this is close enough. Thank you. And finally, the 2020 Olympic Games. Honestly, it's on pace to be as good as these games, but it was still lacking a few features, so there you go, there's my tier list, enjoy, okay, bye. Warning, do I even need one this time? Okay. What, what is taking so long? Dude, come on, I, I just want to play. Dude, what the heck? What, come on and freaking load already. I'm really glad no other Sonic game has been called Sonic the Hedgehog. I also love how I found a box that says Platinum Family Hits. <laughs> okay, sure. I hope you like playing a little Sonic in this loading screen game. Sonic can't even run through some birds. All good games have missions where you go through rings. Who talks while swinging their arms like this? Hey. Well, besides him. Breaking boxes is so unsatisfying because the sound effect is so tame for some reason. Hey look, it's Sonic Adventure! So Tails' main attack is throwing dummy rings. What? You want to talk about oversensitive controls? Try flying his tails. Have fun. Colliding into anything during the speed sections is the most unintentionally funny thing I've ever seen. And when you jump during these sections, you can't move and you're locked in place. It's amazing how bad this is. I need permission to go to the desert? I'm Sonic! Let me through! The idea of this boss is cool, but the horrible camera completely ruins it. If Sonic can home attack with his feet, why doesn't he always do this? It seems way more convenient. Fighting Silver, do I need to say more? It's no use! Oh fun, I have to blindly find the six Soliata boys without them showing up on a radar. Finding this captain to open this door is miserable. After the lieutenant tells you what to do, the game loads. Then this guy says there's five soldiers to look for, and the game loads. If you pick the wrong captain, the game loads. Then you're sent back to the lieutenant and he tells you to try again, and the game loads! Holy sh- And guess who the captain was the whole time? It was the lieutenant! What an asshole! Okay, hold on. The speed limit here is apparently 60 miles an hour. This is a city! If there were cars on the road, there would be car crashes every day. I have spent more time mindlessly destroying mechs than playing actual levels. Why am I even allowed to do this? This awesome speed segment would be so much better if the controls were actually functional. If you need help, go to the shop. Look, pal, I am perfectly fine. I think you and half a Soliana needs to go to the doctor for their back problems. So I can't really spin attack this car to stop it. I'm stuck with freaking kicking it. And also, why didn't this lady just call the cops instead? Knuckles, I know we all got issues, but walking into a wall ain't gonna help much. You will never be cool enough to stand like this. Sorry, just accept it. This test shouldn't be called the test of courage, but instead the test of patience. That's because you don't have rings for this mission and have to beat all these enemies, and the stupid things spawn behind you, so half the time you'll end up dying, which also means you sit through four loading screens before trying again. The save system is disgusting, even for 2006 standards. Generally, you can only save after each chapter, so if you get close to finishing one and get a game over, you may have to restart up to 30 minutes of gameplay. What the f What kind of security lasers turn on and off every two seconds? It's time to upgrade, Eggman. This legit looks like the Windows XP background. So Amy comes in to save Sonic, but being Silver the Hedgehog, he can grab multiple things at once. Why couldn't he have gotten hold of Sonic and Amy? 
I am not a fan of this huge delay Shadow has after attacking an enemy. It's kind of jarring. Why use your amazing running abilities when you can drive a monster truck? Yeah. This is not math training. It's just memorizing numbers. Also, why is this even in the game? Great, we're hunting for keys again, but now without a radar. Meth files the dark, in case you needed some more edgy. So the gems for Sonic? Yep, they're completely broken. This bar in the corner is supposed to go down when you use them, but it doesn't, so you can abuse their powers as much as you want. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but it's incredibly irritating trying to cling off a wall as Knuckles or Rouge. It only seems to work when it feels like it. Suddenly, Shadow the Hedgehog the game. I hate trying to hit the enemies, but Shadow decides to lock on to these metal orb ball things instead. What happens to Omega's voice? It sounds really off. Rouge the Bat. I like hub worlds and games, but not when there's practically nothing in them. This doggo is not having a good day. Hey John, play the audio. This sounds strangely familiar. You know, people are over-exaggerating this ball puzzle. If you just take your time, you're not gonna have any issues with it. Okay, but really? It took me three tries. Get good, scrubs. The boss with silver is a joke. You can hit stun Sonic and Shadow and they don't stand a chance. I like when the rocks collide with Iblis and it sounds like a laser instead of, gee, I don't know, a rock? Since when did Dr. Eggman use Google Glass? Oh God, here we go. Okay, no, come on, Elise, you, you really, come on, you really don't need to do that. Please don't do that. Uh, uh, okay. I didn't need to see that. I did not need to see that. Mm. Sonic 06 is a game that could have been great. It had the potential to be a huge success with its huge variety of characters, great music, and even interesting gameplay design. But instead, what we were given was an insanely unpolished and unoptimized experience and was one of the biggest letdowns of all time. That is no use. This video has legendary and story spoilers? Hey. <gasps> oh my god, it's a warning mine! Apparently most opinions were shared before the game even came out, and people need to stop attacking the developers when the Pokemon company is at fault for forcing games out every year. It's a shiny! No, come back! No, it was a shiny! It was a shiny, oh. Of course the champion has a Charizard. Wow, big surprise. Oh, that your flash new phone? What, don't you mean flashy new phone? It's the first two minutes. How is there a spelling error? I love all the details on the town map, but I wish we could zoom in and out of it. There is a Pokemon that is literally an apple. This is the best day of my life. Losing the national dex isn't the worst thing in the world, but I do feel bad for those that had a favorite Pokemon cut and for the more hardcore fans. As a casual player, I love that XP share is always on and makes grinding less mandatory, but why can't that be an option? It shouldn't be forced on everyone. Look, all memes aside, damn these trees look really bad. Did Oak Green have time pay a visit or what? Wait a second, is that Poppin? <gasps> Oh my god, that was Poppin'. Guys, it's 2019. Poppin' was banned from games 200 years ago. This cannot be accepted. <sighs> I managed to find the Pokemon Research Lab? Uh, how am I supposed to miss it when Hop told me where it was from 50 feet away and it has a purple roof? How is there no Pokeballs for sale right away? That's lame. Leon is being a bad example for catching Pokemon. You don't just toss the ball out right away. No, you gotta weaken them first. Duh. Why is every route so linear and narrow? More branching paths in space would have been nice. Choodle is the derpiest Pokemon I've ever seen, and I absolutely love him. Why can't every location have a free roaming camera? It's so nice in the wild areas. Like, come on, this isn't a new concept. Mario 64 is laughing at you right now. There's really not much to do in the towns. You check them out once, and that's about it. You know, it's rude to talk to people without looking at them, let alone turning your back on them. So I'm fighting Team Yell in this hotel, but the background is just bubbles? Where is the hotel background? I hate how often you get auto-healed. Like seriously, I fought two trainers, stop auto-healing me! So I picked 666 as my uniform number, but you know 99% of these numbers are gonna be 69 or 420. Every time I talk to Hop, he has to squat and shake his arms. That's just weird, dude. Who turned a fruit roll-up into a Pokemon? 
Never running out of escape rope is a great quality of life improvement, but I never need to use it. There's like two or three small caves in the whole game. Today I learned that a fox with a mustache is very creepy. Milo is the definition of a kid trapped in a man's body. What's with the random frame drops before a battle? These three buildings all look exactly the same on the inside. Why can I only fish in these specific spots? I should be able to fish anywhere with water. If you want Mew in the game again, you need a Pokeball Plus. Yep, that's right, just like in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And you can't even use your old Pokeball Plus if you've already used it for Mew. Nice $50 DLC game freak. Let's be honest, Hop and Howe are pretty much the same characters. Even the animations are reused and he almost has the same name and acts very similarly. It is really weird how little trainer fights there are in this game. Even the gyms have less than usual. What is my favorite color? Uh, I don't know, pink I guess? Okay, I didn't know your favorite color. I'm sorry, I guess, how was I supposed to know? What the heck, you're dropping my stats for that? John, time how long it takes to go from Route 7 to 8. Nine seconds, with a loading screen. Good God. Watch the Pokemon when I reach the ladder. Yep, they all just freeze in place. I must be super scary on that ladder. If it's cold enough in this room to see your breath, why are we forced to be in shorts? This man really tried to catch a legendary with a Pokeball, and he thought it would work, mate. So what are you playing? Pokemon Oof version. What? It's a ROM hack. Ah, okay. So, uh, you gotta get Sword and Shield? Nope. They cut out my favorite Pokemon. No Geodude, no Graveler, no Golem, and no Aerodactyl. Fair enough, I guess. And also, all the caves suck. There's not a single nice boulder to stay at. Wait a minute. That's why you didn't buy the game? Have you seen the boulders? Warning Mon came back. What? What? It's a really rare Pokemon. Oh, dude, where's my where's my Master Ball? Eh, don't worry about it. I got it. Hmm. Well, I'm going back to Pokemon Oof. Ciao. Warning: The following video is slightly over exaggerated. A few opinions are accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Because who doesn't love stickers? It's not like we ever want to use them. Right? Bowser has flip-flops. This is not a good start. Who would throw a festival for freaking stickers? For a Paper Mario game, there sure is a lot of toads and not a lot of interesting characters like Goombella, Vivian, Koops, Lady Bo, and the list goes on and on. I was gonna say something about the green toad being a jerk and not helping push, but then he gets squished by the ground and he got what he deserved. Come on, Mario. Fall in. Fall in! Please! Fall in the freaking fountain! Talk about a worn down battle system, all I could do now is attack or run. You could do so much more in the older games, like swap partners, use a special, skip a turn, gain experience points for winning battles like a normal RPG does. And the fact that you lose stickers after one use sucks. It makes me not want to do any fights and just save up the stickers for bosses because there's no penalty for running from enemies. These toads making a bridge is pretty cool, but they're made of paper. There is no way they could handle the weight of Mario stepping on them like this. While you can technically organize your stickers, you also can't. There's no way to move them manually to your liking. This is actually just symbolization of a Goomba that's stuck between two pipes. Ah, so I have to stop this Bowser statue from flowing water. If I just grow through this path, then maybe I... Mmm, of course it's coming from his buttocks. Of course. Ugh. I wish there was a run button. R isn't really used, so it could have been mapped to that. So this door for 2-1 requires six stickers to open. I only had half of them, so I went to the shop to get what I was missing, but lo and behold, the fire flower wasn't at the shop. Which means I had to go into a random level or the shop in 1-6 just to get the stupid flower. Oh my god, finally! An interesting looking character! Ah, oh, what does he have to say? Oh my god, really? I don't want to fight him. He's just playing some tunes. Why do the worn out hammer and jump stickers even exist? There's literally zero reason to get them when there's so many other better stickers out there. So to beat 2-4, you use paper eyes near the sandstorm and then you use the vacuum thing. And that's it. Yep, that's the whole stage. Enjoy your star comet. Like, why didn't they put this inside an actual level? Yeah. 
When you're in the desert, water is the bomb. Oh yeah, ha, get it? There's something fascinating and creepy about toad Egyptians. Why can't I hammer this little stub thing? Hey look, it's totally not Lost Woods. Oh, finally I get a partner, and it's a segment of Wiggler's body. Yay. You can't buy secret door stickers anywhere but here. That's called a monopoly, baby. Yeah, look at how smug this toad is. Wait till the law catches up with you, pal. I just realized that slinging the things at this paper is literally reverse doodle bob. Couldn't Mario use this paper and just make everything become flat and lifeless and then be used for consentless destruction? <laughs> oh great, a random game show, again. Stay perky? Don't tell me how to live my life. Why do I feel like I'm playing Breaking Bad right now? Boy, am I glad it was obvious to hit my hammer at the air to make these invisible blocks appear just so I could get this secret door. Suddenly, Luigi's Mansion. Or, I, I guess, Mario's Mansion now. Ah, the infinite jump sticker. The ability to do 100 jumps. That's totally not broken. Wait, how is Toad talking to me through this block of ice? Remind me to never go skiing with Mario. He's a little on the reckless side. What's this, an NES password? Cornering this shy guy is a freaking nightmare. Stickers are not food, huh? Well, how do you explain the shaved ice, soda, turkey, and cake stickers? This Bowser fight is really cool, but seriously, the lava never kills him anymore. Most of the recent Mario games, he dips into lava and becomes more powerful. Like, it happens every time. So with all this said, is Paper Mario Sticker Star really that bad of a game? I mean, it does have a lot of really redeeming qualities, like, um, fantastic graphics for a 3DS. The writing? It's amazing. Also, really cool text, regardless of their stickers or not. The music is slapping, absolutely slapping, and the bosses are super fun. Now, that's a lot of cool things, but then on the other hand, there's three core mechanics of Sticker Star that ruin the game. No fun partners, difficulty spikes for no reason, and the worst part of all, the battle system. These three things essentially ruin the game, and honestly, it's really disappointing. And there's not much else to say. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my feels and thoughts. So are you ready to give up all those quarters for some arcade goodness? You better be. Do you have Mario Kart? What the hell is that? Some new credit card Nintendo's making? Don't look so sad that I don't want your card, Mario. Jeez, that's not the end of the world. I hope you like Grand Prix and Time Trials, because that's the only two game modes. So we have freaking Pac-Man as a character, which is amazing, but no Waluigi, or Rosalina, or Diddy Kong? You may not use the camera now. Well, that's fine, I didn't want to anyway. While it looks like each cup has four tracks, it's actually just two. The first two tracks are brand new, while the last two are just different variants, like a sunset for Mario Highway or nighttime for Mario Beach. Also, if this track is supposed to be a highway, then it's the shortest highway ever. So this game has 93 items, which is freaking insane, but don't get too excited because you can only use a few of these items per race. Yeah, three items per race, have fun. And many of these items work in the same manners. You're mostly locking onto somebody, throwing something forward or backward, or shielding yourself. They all feel the same after a while. Uh, no, you don't throw the boo, you send them out to steal items. This is just wrong. That's right, you pay up those quarters after one race. Gotta love the arcades. The beginning of Mario Beach looks almost identical to Mario Highway until you get to this small sand segment. Oh yeah, poisonous tires, my favorite Mario Kart item. I'm really not a fan of Pac-Man's voice. It just doesn't fit his design at all. You can only throw certain items backwards. And yeah, I know it's on an arcade, but I'm sure they could have worked around that. Boy oh boy, the thundercloud actually first appeared in this game. Yeah, everyone's favorite item, right? Hmm. So after Grand Prix races, there's a challenge level you do, which is pretty cool, but they start us with moving a watermelon, because that was so fun in Mario Sunshine. Like Double Dash, there's character-specific special items, which is pretty neat. The problem with that is you have to unlock these, so it can take quite a while to unlock all these different specials, which doesn't really make sense for an arcade game. Now, that's what the Mario Kart is for, it's to store your data, but again, this is an arcade machine, not a console at home. This is the most disgusting mushroom I've ever seen. 
<laughs> I'm just realizing that Mario Kart Arcade has a regular shield item, but Mario Kart doesn't. Yeah, there's the hearts, I guess, but that's exclusive to Peach and Daisy, so that barely counts. Man, these Koopas are just chilling out, having a good time, and here we go, beating them senseless with a hammer for no reason. I'm sorry, guys. This track is called Bananin Ruins. Yep, not Banana Ruins, Bananin, with the extra N, just so it makes more sense, yeah. What's the deal with six racers anyway? I mean, eight would have been fine, and there's more than eight playable characters, too. I like how we go from a forest to a goddamn LSD trip. This is actually sick. Oh, epic, a banana in fifth place. That'll help a lot. While I like both of the Bowser Castle tracks, they look way too similar. Like here, we just cut to the second one, and it looks basically the same because it reuses way too many assets. You can barely tell the difference. If you want to continue unlocking tracks, you have to get first place. Like, I got second in this race, and now I'm forced to try again. What kind of bullcrap is that? So this little Bowser fight is really cool, but how is this rock still up with only one pillar left? Also, you're supposed to jump over these flames, but you can still win while taking as much damage as you want, so it's basically impossible to lose. Oh nice, Robo Mario, a clone character. You know how I feel about those. So for some reason, in this game's data is a picture of the Bezlon School hostage crisis. What the heck? Let's list off all the mushrooms in this game. We've got the Absorbing Mushroom, Mega Mushroom, Invisible Mushroom, Slimy Mushroom, Heavy Mushroom, Mushroom, Golden Mushroom, Sick Mushroom, and Fine Mushroom. Do you think that's enough? Ah, <sighs> jeez. Hey, bro. Can I have a few hundred quarters? What? Yeah, you see, I wanted to play Mario Kart Arcade, but I'm out of money. Uh... No. Oh, come on! You're not missing much, trust me. Mario Kart Arcade is just alright. Well, what about the second one? Wait, there's a second one? Yeah, come on, let's hit up the arcades! I got a few quarters for us. Uh, wait a minute. I thought you didn't have quarters. What? What? No? I didn't say that. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So are you prepared for more quarters to be guzzled up? Just admit it, right now. At least Waluigi's playable now, but who is this Famachi? Tamagotchi seems like the one franchise that has no business in Mario Kart. And why are Wario, Dong, and Bowser labeled for advanced players only? Yeah, well guess what? I'm picking Mamachi, and I'm also advanced, whether you like it or not. Poor Blinky. He thinks he can fly this plane, but we're not actually in Diddy Kong Racing. And guess what? There's only four new tracks. Four. Yeah, that's it. The rest of them come from the first game. And they didn't even bother to recreate or remix the retro tracks. They're all just ported right in. So this Mario Kart tones down in items with 57. And that's because the special items are nowhere to be found. They could have at least kept them in, but not forced you to unlock them. The narrator will not shut up. He commentates on every little thing that's happening. Luigi picks up coins in one stretch. Luigi shot an item. Peach, Boo is hanging on the handle, making the wheel heavy. Seriously, can you zip it? Luigi, this frame blocks your view. Is that really supposed to block my view? Because it, it honestly isn't, like, at all. I can see perfectly fine. Luigi, Boo is hanging on the handle, making the wheel heavy. No, he's not. He's on my head. What, are you blind? That is the creepiest item I've ever seen in my life. Why is this course even called Yoshi Park 2 when half of the track is loaded with Luigi's Mansion references? And it looks like they still didn't fix that spelling error for Banana and Ruins. Or it's not a spelling error, which makes less sense. Well, Luigi, missed the item box. This may hurt. All right, I don't need your sass, pal. I get it. I messed up. The AI is really weird in GP2. The first half, there's always one player that's miles ahead of everyone, but then near the end, they just slowed down, I guess? I don't understand this change. Even the challenges are exactly the same. Why bother calling this a sequel if like 80% of this is just the first arcade game? That blimp has a mustache and a nose, and I am not okay with that. You know what this song kind of sounds like? Eh, 
I mean, it's not that similar, but it does give off the same vibe. When the game says to jump 70 meters, how am I supposed to know the first time that I would be jumping multiple times? I'm only just realizing how boring DK Jungle is. It's literally just an oval loop. Has anyone in the history of ever gotten attacked by these piranha plants? I haven't even brought up the drifting yet. You're supposed to jump and tap the brakes twice. That is extremely unintuitive. A broken snowblower has covered the course in snow. Look, I'm no expert on snowblowers, but that makes no sense. If it's broken, wouldn't that mean there'd be no snow on the ground? Here we are live from Pack Mountain. Drive through Packland in this forest track. The most talented driver is Ms. Pac-Man. What thrilling techniques will we see? That took 13 seconds. Like, come on, does the narrator really need to talk this much? There's still only two game modes, Grand Prix and Time Trials. Of all the things to put into a launcher, we get a banana. Whoa, scary. I gotta say, the Rainbow Road music really doesn't live up to any of the other songs from previous Mario Kart games. Toad is banging away. Lamechi is banging away. Bowser, wow! Mario is banging away. Wow, there's a lot of banging going on. If I'm not mistaken, all these animations are straight up recycled from Mario Kart DS whenever you get first place. I like that when you beat all the tracks, you unlock a special cup which is basically mirror mode. But why not take that a step further and complete these backwards instead? All the tracks are so flat that it'd be more doable and way more interesting. Okay, wait a second. I'm looking this up and it looks like GP2 is basically the same as the first game. And... Well, it doesn't add much to the sequel. At least from what I'm seeing, there's not really much of a point. But I've never tried it. Uh, yep, it's pretty much the same tracks, dude. Like, you're really not missing much of anything. And I saw those quarters in your hand, don't lie to me. Okay, you caught me. I have four quarters, four. That's not hundreds, that's not enough to beat the game. <sighs> Will you just drop this? I'm not gonna give you hundreds of quarters. Don't make me use this. Whoa, hold on a second. You're really gonna threaten me over a video game? You know, I don't know how this rock works exactly, but it gives me all sorts of powers. So are you feeling lucky? Honestly, no. I'm feeling crazy. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Because really, this is pretty much the first two arcade games, but it also isn't. Where is the time trial mode? So this game had DLC going for five years, adding new characters, tracks, and carts. While that's really neat, that is super bizarre for an arcade game. While Peach Castle may look like a brand new course, its layout is basically the same as Yoshi Park 1 from GP2. If you go through this much effort to redo the graphics, why not just redesign the whole thing? Anybody else find the character icons on the bottom really distracting? I know it's commonplace in some racing games, but I don't like it. Once again, each cup only has two unique tracks, but now the third and fourth tracks are just straight up duplicates of each other. This is Mario Highway, but with dolphins flying through the air. That's kind of sick, actually. Is there any reason that this game needs a banana, triple banana, giant banana, banana train, golden banana, and triple golden bananas? Man, they really weren't monkeying around, were they? This sign says diving, but I can't go for a dive. That would have been pretty epic, honestly. For as beautiful as this Bond Dance Street looks, it's too bad it's just an oval track. Seeing the gliders in here is great, but they don't really add much to any of the levels besides that you're in the air for a little longer. This thwomp straight up wanted to spook me. Yeah, he doesn't want to squish, he just wants to spook. Bowser's Factory and Bowser's Castle look way too similar. Like seriously, the beginning of each track is almost one to one, but later on, it changes completely. So why not make the whole track distinct? There's not a single Rainbow Road track in this game. What kind of Mario Kart doesn't have Rainbow Road? And that's really all there is to say. Mario Kart Arcade GPDX is a fine game, but I don't know if I would call it deluxe necessarily. Uh, dude, you know, you don't, you don't have to. Then give me the quarters. I'm just saying, I know exactly what it's like to have that kind of power, but you gotta control yourself. Why do you gotta threaten me? Because you're not gonna tell anyone. Here. Okay, that works. 
So, uh, no hard feelings, right? Nope. with someone to the arcades. Well, why didn't you say that? Well, I thought you wouldn't want to go. Nathaniel, we're brothers. Of course I'll go to the arcade with you. Okay. Warning! The following video is not over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared are accurate to my vibes and thoughts. So who's ready to party with Bowser and get completely annihilated? Any takers? There's no intro cutscene and this menu is incredibly boring. Why does Amiibo have to be shouted every time I put my cursor over it? Amiibo! 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 I know this is really picky, but if you're gonna have black outlines around the characters, make them look smooth at least. I love how the game expects you to only spend 5 minutes in free play. That's pretty low expectations. So what's with this easy minigame pack? Aren't like 99% of Mario Party minigames easy? Great, we're back in the freaking cars again. But there is an option for traditional play. More on that at 11. You can't even hit a dice block anymore to see who rolls first. Since when was anybody ever scared of a Goomba? Even the big ones aren't intimidating. Isn't it a little odd that the minigame instructions scroll under the video feed instead of being, oh, I don't know, written on the left side where there's space? Bullet Bill Bullies is stupidly unfair for the person on the switchboard. They stand no chance of surviving. Shouldn't there be a seatbelt or at least a bar on this ride? Everyone's gonna fall off and die. This is just Gimp Splatoon. Mario Party 10 has insanely unmemorable music. It all feels very generic and bland. I guess we're playing Paper Mario Color Splash now. So we have five boards to pick from. The first Mario Party had a bigger selection than this. There's something really stupid and funny about Bowser just chilling in jail on the gamepad. The backward spaces still suck. They just add more time to a fairly dull board. Why make the car look like a plane? Now I just want to fly around, especially on this board because this is a dope location. Wow, we count Goombas in this game. That's really fun. Mega Mani Mole's Maze Mischief. Say that 10 times fast. This is a great co-op minigame, but why not just use the Poltergeister to suck up the booze? Bowser Party is a cool idea, but it's so broken. Bowser gets so many dice blocks to catch up to everyone else, and it's nearly impossible for the other team to win because of this. And worse, there's only 10 Bowser minigames, so they constantly get replayed. Like seriously, you can cheese this game so hard with Bowser. Just knock out one character in the minigame, then the car can't move as far since there's less characters, and yep, Bowser is just completely OP. Ooh, an entire game mode that requires an amiibo to play it. Oh, and uh, by the way, this came out when most amiibo were pretty scarce. That's right, the amiibo mode is what we wanted all along, a traditional play style. So this is basically $12 DLC, and the board is literally just a square. But what about the other amiibo? Well, they've all got unique boards too. As in, they're all squares, but the backgrounds and subspaces are different. Being forced to switch from using the gamepad and Wii Remote is needlessly overcomplicated. I love that you can view the route when the board already fits on the whole screen. Hey! Fellow stranger that's picked me up, set me down at once! If you throw me, you will enter the circle of hell! Okay, uh, man, I'm getting really delusional these days. Got a four. No, what? What? Uh, uh hello? I, I, stop. Okay. <laughs> 